It is Tuesday, April 11th. We are in our next deliberation budget session. Uh, I am not in person. It is spring break this week. Um, and I have two children that are out of town. And so I have asked the deputy mayor to help run deliberations in the room. And so um, I think that'll just be easier for everyone as we toggle between debates. With that, uh, Miss Acting Town Manager, do you have anything to provide or to present before we let the finance folks present our latest scenarios? We don't have a microphone here, but no, nothing right now. Okay, no mic, gotcha. Okay, but the counselors have their mics at their tables, correct? Yes. Okay. Got it. So I believe I uh, will ask uh, Ms. Sharon Gentle Harris to uh, touch base on the updated scenarios that the council requested last deliberation. We'll walk through those as efficiently as possible, and then we'll proceed to kind of gain a consensus on what we would like to provide to our town meeting on May 1st. You have the floor, ma'am. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, can you hear me? Yep, can hear you loud and clear. And before I go into the various uh, scenarios which have been continually updated, um, it's a work in progress. I'd like to turn your attention to the historical tax impact. This is one of the information that was requested at the last meeting. There are two of them. Just to give a historical perspective so you could use that when you go into looking at what we're going to do for this year based on what we've done in the past. The first one we look at is an assessed value of about 250000 Make note that's not the market value, that's the assessed value of your house. Market value would be a little higher. Um, the market value is usually done and we apply a 70% deduction to that to the assessed value. And this shows what has been done, what the mill rates were over the years, starting from 2017 to what we did in 2023. So that would just kind of lay the groundwork for you from a historical perspective. The same thing applies if you look at the one that has the assessed value at 136000 $500, the same mill rate applied, but to a lower value house, um, just to show what's been done um, for that also. So that's just a quick for your information to see how things have trended over the years and to kind of get us to where we are currently or where we will be going in fiscal year 2024. So any questions on the historical piece before I go on to the tax impact of the various mill rates. Well, we'll leave the various the tax impact of the various mill rates for last. But any questions on the historical? I know they are what they are, but all right, I'll move on from there. Then I'd like to bring your attention to the, the summer scenarios. In prior meetings, you were given various balance sheet numbers of ranging from scenario one, which was a town manager proposed, to various scenarios that had been requested over time. And up to a few hours ago, we were now up to scenario 20. And what I wanted to capture so you're not flipping through all the various sheets, to see on one page what all the various inputs are. So if I go across, let's take um, scenario two, the base budget is 106,143,535. In that, we are using fund balance of 2.75 million. Board of Ed is at 3%. The town budget is 35,438. And the reason that is higher than the town manager proposed in, in um, scenario one, is mainly because of CIP, you can see it highlighted there. We had proposed 500,000 in CIP. And then in that session, we wanted to cover all 
CIP. So we came up with an additional 1.77 million to bring the CIP request at 2.27. So that's what increased the town operations from 33 to 35 million, to 35 million. The budget mod remains at 200,000. With those adjustments to scenarios, we end up with a mill rate of 36.35. That's a 5.27 increase over fiscal year 2023. So all the increase that you're seeing is in relation to, to what it was in fiscal year 2023. Because we're using 2.75 million out of fund balance to balance the budget, the fund balance is at 14.6 million, which would bring the percentage down to 13.77. Most of the items remain the same, except you can see uh, scenario three. What changed in that scenario is Board of Ed went from 2% to 4%, bringing up the mill rate to 36.8 a 6.57 change, fund balance remain the same. If there's any questions while I'm going along, you can stop me. Um, but most of these scenario four, BOE went up to four to 6%. Scenario five, it went up to 8%. All else being equal, scenario six, 8.8%. And at that 8.8%, the mill rate is now up to 37.86, a 9.64% increase. Fund balance remains the same. Then we go into scenario seven. Good, one second. Yes. Council person with her. Yes. Um, quick question. Wouldn't it not suit the council to go through scenarios two through 11 because it would put us under our 15% of the fund balance? Which would negatively impact us from a rating agency. So I wouldn't want to consider any of these um, from two to eleven because it puts us significantly under our policy. I agree. Wait. It's a waste of time to go through that because it puts us way below our from our balance. So I would, if it was okay with the the, the, the body for us to start with twelve through twenty, because it looks like those keep us way above the fifteen percent. Um, threshold from the fund balance policy, just the recommendation, just to save time. So, go ahead, Tom. <laughs> um, so, one of the things that I think we briefly discussed um, last meeting was certain things that weren't in the scenarios, right? Um, uh, the, I think it was, did he find money for the contractor for? Social services? Yes, that's that's in there. That's in here. The yes. The um when the budget was proposed for the contract for social services, that money ended up in two different places. Part of it was in the budget mod, so and part of it was in the town based budget itself at 50,000. Okay. And then the budget mod had another amount to equate to like the 88,000. 88, mm -hmm. So once the budget mod was scrapped, in the base budget itself remained 50,000 that would have covered the contractor. Okay. And in looking to save some money, that amount was reduced even more, leaving sufficient to cover the contractor, but putting some of that we could apply to savings here. As you can see, that equates about 20,000, which leaves 30,000. Mm -hmm. Not a lot to make a dent in here, but it is covered in the base budget. Okay. Yes. I wanted to make sure that that was covered. I also it is. Mm -hmm. thought that there were some CIP projects that we were going to try to get done, um, even if it was just the money for the study for um, uh, the flooding situation. So I don't know if, if that's, because if we're starting to add to that, then it's going to now change these numbers. So I, I think you just need to figure out what, we're, what we want to see and then try to make real numbers out of them. Does that make any sense? 
So I so right now we have numbers, right? Uh, if if you want to go with um, Councilor McCleary from twelve to twenty, actually, yes, from twelve to twenty, we're at that sweet spot for our fund balance, right? Where we're not gonna we're not going below um, sixteen percent. So we're at the sweet spot between scenarios twelve to scenario twenty. And we can see the different numbers based on what we're going to give the DOE and how we're going to use fund balance, if anything, in scenario number 20. My thought is if we're going to add anything back from CIP specifically, we need to know what we're going to add back because that will then change the numbers that we currently have. Are you sorry? Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying, though? I kind of do, but I just want to remind you that all of these scenarios, especially up to 14, were all ones that were requesting. So they're just reiterations Correct. of what was discussed before. Correct. There weren't any changes made to that. And at the conclusion of the last meeting, we were, um, the mayor had asked us to do the scenario with 543 and two, so all of those were requested. Now, if once you've come to a conclusion or semi-conclusion of where you think you want to be your base to jump off from, then we could go in and put in these other pieces. If none of these that we've already gone through before satisfies what you're trying to accomplish, then we could go, but this is just to provide a summary of what was discussed and provided at the last meeting. Correct. Yeah. That's why I'm saying mm -hmm. if there's anything that we're going to add, mm -hmm. this would be the time, right? Because we, we have our jump off numbers based on previous discussion. Yes. So we see what the numbers is. Let's say we're going to give the board for between three and 5%. Okay. Let's say we're going to add two projects from CIP. You put those in and then you'll see what your numbers are really looking like. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, that's all I was saying. Councilperson Mahoney, before we go to you, I, I think what Councilperson Beacon Brown said makes sense, but obviously we have to choose a scenario and we may have to add into it, which will increase the numbers, but at least we, we need to find a scenario that we're comfortable with scenarios and then add whatever you may to find out what the bottom line would be. But this is just the base. Yeah. Pick the one that you would have to make the least adjustments to and kind of make the most sense and then go from there. Correct. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. We have to choose a template to yes. work off of. This is exactly what I was going to say. Um, so I think it does make sense to continue to present 12 through 20 because we did agree at the last meeting that we don't want to go below, go below a certain threshold. Um, so. Um, to reiterate Councilman McClary's point, if, if the body agrees, we can just start off at 12 and just go through the rest from there. And it seems like we have a consensus for that. Yeah, um, wow. Everyone here in the room is thumbs up. What about, Mayor, are you okay with that? Yeah, I was just going to suggest um, exactly what Councilman McClary had suggested. Let's go, let's let Sharon finish 12 through 20. Let's uh, run a consensus on what template, to Councilor Mahan's point, that we want to utilize. And then we'll do some additions or subtractions per Council DeBeath and Brown's suggestion. So I think that that's an efficient way to go. Um, so Sharon, thank you. Hold on, we still have a couple of hands. Are there any more questions? OK. Council Mayor had his hand. I was thinking you suggested. I think it's a little no one, okay. I, I don't think anybody here really thinks we should go with the 2% for the board anymore. And I'm hoping that we should just knock those options off. And even 3% seems ridiculous to me. Um, but, um, and I, I'm not sure that we couldn't be looking at uh, something like 16% not 16 and a half, because I, have, I don't think we're ever going to get there with trying to get, uh, without some delay there, I, unless somebody's got some bright ideas. I, I think we're just going to hope that it's risky, but everything we do is risky. And that's what the name of the game is. As much as I wanted to hold that 
I, I think at least 60% is better than 40% or 15%. And uh, I, I just don't think we're going to get there without coming down to a fund balance of 16.5. Uh, and so I, I think that's possible. But I, I don't think anybody's mentioned a board increase less than four and a half. That's what we had last year. And that would give us a lot too. So, so, so it sounds like we're getting into a debate right now, not necessarily questions yeah, for sure. Yes, there's certain, I don't know, I haven't heard anybody here advocating 2% for the board. And I think that, okay, I'll leave it at that. Councilperson Perry. Well, I know at the last council meeting, um, yes, at the last budget meeting, we also talked about, because I have my notes, we talked about looking at higher increases um, or delay um, for four months in the chair. I know we talked about looking at that, we talked about making sure that um, we didn't we didn't impact critical services. Um, and so can you tell us which one of these scenarios from 14 from 12 to 20 and the hiring degrees or delay in hiring um, so that we can start from there and then build off of the thing that we wanted to do. Oh, the whole Councilperson to beef and brown. But I will say uh, at the last meeting, I thought there was consensus around the fact that we were not going to go below 16.5 for fund balance. Yep. That's I correct. We yeah, that's correct. That. Yep. Right? Yeah. Right. So right. right. So just 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 another just a thought, right? Because what Councilor Merritt just said was it, there was a, a consensus that we all wanted to go above 2% with the Board of Education. So then would it make sense to take out all the ones from 12 to 20 that had a 2% of the BOE in there? That's what I was saying. That's what you, right. So if we if we have a consensus yeah, of taking- Elimination. Right, so if we, if we have that consensus where we can take out all the scenarios with 2%, then, then it whittles it down a little bit further, right? To try to help us to get to a jump off spot or two. Right. So, and I, I also wanted to say, I know that we had talked about freezing um, certain positions and things like that, but I don't know if that was in, in, in all of, it might be in one, but I don't know if it was in all of the other scenarios, because yeah. then if it's, it's exactly. So once again, you need to, it's in 20, but we need to compare apples to apples. And Council McCleary, you suggested four months, probably we do six months, probably we do eight months. Once again, if we can narrow it down a little further, i.e. taking out all the 2% for the Board of Ed, and then at least we now have one, two, three, four, five scenarios instead of nine. That, that, that's a, a good comment. Let's see if there's any consistent consensus above 2% for the Board of Ed. For the Board of Ed, if there's consensus that, above. that we won't go, that will be above 2%. Above. So we can take that out. Yes. Okay. So there is some sense. Okay. So, Councilor, before we move on, do you... yeah, I, I would like to know what is there anything above the 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, including the four months? Um, and in my understanding, is anything additional to four months will impact um, critical services to the time we feel a higher increase over? Four, four or five months, right? In my conversation with some of the directors, they did impact that even at full staff, they're running long hours and they will try to get it done, but it would be a tremendous strain on the staff that they, they have currently. Um, what may be impact, you don't know until you face it. Um, they, with the last um, public safety meeting, they mentioned about shortage in police staff, especially in, in patrolling Capaco. There's two positions that are open for that. That's not being filled. So when you look at things like that in public works, um, that's the other major one. Those are usually two major ones. We are going into the summer. Luckily, there won't be any snowfall, but there's the maintenance and the activities that are going on um, with that. So it will be a strain on them and that's coming from the directors that I've spoken to um, uh, to answer the question. Okay. Uh, before we move on, acting town manager, 
Is there a document whereby you can provide to us with a list of all the open positions? Because I know it was sent in an email at some point, but is there someone who can print it out so that we can all have that document before? Because we're talking about hiring freeze and all that. And I think yeah. we all need to be able to say that we're looking at the same information. Thank you. Councilperson. And uh, I'm not sure if this is possible, but can we pick and choose which positions we do hiring freezes for? Or does it have to be across the board? Yeah. It, it have to be right across the board. Right. Can we say that this department can fill or, or can we say like, for example, the police force can continue to to hire if need be, but all other departments have to maintain a hiring freeze? Is that I, I think we may be able to do some of that, but again, Hiring and firing belongs to the you know, under the auspices of the town manager. So we have to be careful of how far we go. I mean, we can prescribe and suggest that there be some hiring freezes, but it's really not our purview to tell the town manager, you know, who to hire, who to fire, who to freeze. We can make some recommendations, uh, but I think we want to be careful of getting too far into the, the weeds on that. Councilperson. Thank you. Uh, now, there are some positions that either have most recently been filled or are on the brink of being filled. Is that, is that right? right? So, I know there was a plan to identify uh, what amount of savings we would potentially have during this period. I guess, you know, it's based on four months, and we realize that we're going further that will certainly impact negatively uh, the town. Uh, I had a concern or question about CIP. I know we took everything out, but there are some projects that are uh, hanging on the fringe because we have to contribute some portion. I guess some parts are grants and others we have planned to contribute. So could we identify uh, what those additional costs would be. I mean, the council may decide to put more in, but I'm, I'm certain that there are a few areas that were uh, definitely in need of us providing funding for that activity to happen. Right. Why don't we take another question, time uh, Councilperson Deep and Brown, that I want to share and actually walk us through this. Thank you. Um, so, when we get to June 30th, I believe that we will have a better handle on where we are. Right? So, June 30th, we could be, we could be okay. So, that entire freeze, everything we need to talk about, I think it's, it, it's just trying to make sure that everything is now and now. You know what I mean? The more that we do, the better. So, in balancing out, maybe it's not a woman. It's what I should say. I think we'll have a better picture. Um, so, just not making anyone think like, oh my God, you know, they're going to leave us dry on you. Um, I think we would have to be better. So hopefully, being conservative will help us. Can we? Yes, what I'd like to take that time to start I think you mentioned about the temporary phrase, you know, prior to that, is that we take it off. The other nice thing about it is that uh, our real concern is uh, when the bond is ready, people look at us in the next six months, not not twelve months, and uh, and we will know a lot more, as you said, at the end of the fiscal year and even in September where we're at. Thank you. And, uh, so anyway, I'm just saying, I like the idea of holding up hiring because you asked the police chief and those who need two people, but he said, well, we've done a lot of them now, but can you get along with them for another five months? 
He probably would say, yes, of course I can. I may have just used other prior. The same, same goes for public works. And they, they, they know that they've gotten all of that on that. And I'm a little concerned because there are other people, other than those two groups, which I know are important, um, that um, they're about to go out. I, I think you mentioned there are four people that are about, they're about to send out hiring uh, for other people that I don't think are as essential to those people. And I, it concerns me that as we speak, we may be making offers to people to hire them. And that, that really concerns me. And I, I really think we ought to put a temporary, until we know more, it, it won't hurt us at all to wait. I mean, it's not going to get harder to find people. It's going to get easier because the economy is coming down. And so people will be in a much better position in July or August to deal with those things. You know more than now. So that's a nice thing to put a temporary available. And you can budget maybe six months. Oh, I'll just finance. Yeah. Right. All right. Let's, let's get back to uh, the scenario. The theory. So um, back to the scenario summaries, just to be so we are, if you, you know, bear with me, we're not going to look at scenarios one through 11, both are off the table. Well, because they are, because of the fund balance. So the fund balance are the reasons that we're not looking at all of those scenarios. All right. Then 12 and 13, we're not looking at those, even though the fund balance are in line, we're not looking at 12 and 13 because it's a two, primarily because it's a 2% to BOE. Then we are eliminating scenario 18, also because it has a 2% for BOE. And and 20, even though the BOE is 2%, there's some other factors in there that we can apply to others. So while we know the 2% won't apply, but there's things we may pick out of that because in that scenario was where we put some savings that we may have from the town and some other the delay in freezing. So we'll take those and jump into some, jump those into some of the other ones that we have. So we're keeping 3%. So I've yes. eliminated out the 2%, we're keeping the 3%. Yes. Right. Okay, so then I'll know just which one to discuss. So that leads me to this bus 14, 15, 16, 17, and 19. All right, we're on the same page. Okay. I this is the mayor. I, I think it's a mistake to not look at the percentage increase holistically. That's one parameter we didn't get to last time. So I know we're working with our fund balance input, where do we want that to be? And we're also looking at the Board of Ed fund balance, but holistically we haven't, we're looking at a, a huge variance of how much taxpayers and households are able to take on. And we haven't talked about what tax increase we're okay with or what we would like to limit that. I haven't heard that from anyone. And you know, I totally support running a consensus on how much we want our taxpayer increase to be. And we haven't talked about that yet. So I think that you know we have a variation of 5% to 7% here. And that's a huge amount when we're talking about folks on fixed incomes. And I don't, and I feel like that's missing from the conversation as we enter into deliberations. And so while before we supported a, you know, uh, there was a consensus between the council on, a, a, you know, a five to 6% uh, board of ed that did not take into account how much 
taxes we want to raise on households, the property taxes. So I just want to make sure that we're all aware that we haven't had that conversation yet. And it's a parameter that's missing from this discussion. And that's a big variance when you're talking about a 5% tax increase up to a 7% tax increase. So I really think we should really talk about that. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Sharon. I can't. I, saw, I heard a little couple of muffles. I didn't hear anybody. Sorry. Couldn't hear that last comment. Yeah, and, and that's okay. So it's up to the council if there's any one of these based on your suggestion and factors that is dead in the water that you want to eliminate based on the percentage increase that's there. Because while the fund balance numbers are in line and we're showing the board of ed amounts that's palatable, mm -hmm. then you can now look at the percentage change to see if any one of those you want to eliminate because they're considered too high. So what we're doing, we're continually narrowing down the choices. So I'll let the council take a look at that. Okay. Council person Merrick. Thank you. Um, oh, good. I, I wonder if you have come up with any other, have we talked about it, Jay? Is, is that you confirmed that you have some other sources for that might go towards lowering the tax rate? In other words, so we found half a million dollars in unspent capital money that could be uh, go into uh, the budget. Yes, I've confirmed with Nancy and um, Public Works, who are the experts on the CIP, and they both confirm that there is 525,000 that is unspent that could be allocated elsewhere. The issue is based on all the feedback that I've been having, there's differences of opinion in how they want to treat that 525. There was one area of not using it and adding it to fund balance this year. Um, there's others in terms of using it to fund since all the fiscal year 24 CIP money was eliminated, using that to cover some of those other ones that really needed to be covered and um, or just using it elsewhere. So, I've heard differences of opinion, so I would like council consensus in terms of what we can do with it. But yes, to confirm your question, um, there is 525,000 that's left over from capital that doesn't have to be spent. Can I go on? I'm going to ask what have we eliminated all CRP this year? Yes, yes, yes. Except, except what is covered by. Right. No second municipal capital, which is a lot. And, uh, and of course, the big CIP is the library, which is a huge investment, but you got to call it that. Um, I was going to ask do we have a handle on what CIP is basically essential, what we have to do this year that we no longer have in the budget because we eliminated all CIP. If those things cannot be covered by grants, well, how much of that add up to? Do we have a feel for that? Is that how is that dealt with? Here? I think one of the pieces that have to be covered from what I'm aware of, and I know Dan is here, he can speak a little bit more to it because he's more intimately involved than even Dave, who's on the CIP team. But one of the pieces that I know definitely has to be done is the reval. Yes. That's mandatory, and we how can't that? eliminate that. How much is that? 176,000. And that's what part of what they were going to use to cover that since the other 500 for fiscal 24 was eliminated. The thought was to use some of that 525 to cover that one, that mandatory amount. What other items are we, are we really have to do? Well, our, um, 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 from my perspective, I don't know if there's anything that's mandatory by state, it's more a preference. And, uh, but I can let Dan, Dan, you get mine. Before we do that, mm -hmm. I know that in the town manager's original budget proposal, of the 500,000 that was allocated to CIP, there were certain amounts that were mandatory, uh, things that had to be done. And I know the revaluation was one, but I think there were several others. And maybe we can look at the original 
budget to find out uh, what those amounts were. Um, Councilperson, uh -huh. um, so with that five hundred twenty, I would like to use at least some of those funds to go towards some of these CIP products that we've kind of gutted, such as, for example, we had the uh, guardrail replacement. I don't know if that's included in that, but I remember Dan presenting that that's something that we definitely have to do, and that's something that we're doing little by little, placing those guardrails. Another thing is Lowell Park. I 100% I feel like that's something we need to fund, making sure that you know our residents, that, that the town, and can figure out what is the source of this issue that's causing great damage to a lot of people's properties that they're paying taxes on, frankly. Um, we we have to find a way to help these folks that are, like I said, you know, spending thousands of dollars to repair their property to no avail. Um, so that's that's something that um, I said from the very beginning that I I need to have that that one. We got to find a way to to include that, um, and like, and I also want to know if the guard or replacement is included in that because, um, according to what I remember from the presentation from uh, Dan was that the guard or replacement is something that we have to continue to do. So, uh, uh, along with the reval, of course. Councilperson you know, Pilar, sir, and, and let me just say we have a conversation okay, before we get nailed down into CIP dollars. We should come up with a foundational yes. scenario and then work our way up and allocate a certain number of dollars to CIP. But let's not get that, you know, that was gonna be my point. I, we're we're jumping all yeah, over the place and, and let's let's settle on let's settle on a scenario or two scenarios and then we can start Correct. jockeying the money around, but right. let's get to a base budget and then we can start moving stuff around. Thank you. Thank you. So I was going to say that, but I also wanted to add um, that uh, Sharon said in 20, there's some things in 20 that aren't in the others, right? So we don't have the savings of a four-month freeze. We don't have the savings of whether we are spending the 1.7 and the 600,000 this year so that we can do something different with fund balance. So if we can try to... Uh, how to fix those scenarios, that piece right there into the other scenarios, I think that is going to lower the millage. So we'll have we'll have a better idea of what that millage would look like. And it would also give us a better idea of our base budget. So if we took some of the things, we took the good things out of 20 and tried to sprinkle them in 14, 15, 16, and 19, it's gonna give us different numbers. I know. <laughs> She's like, are you crazy? Well, here's the thing, though. But that's going to help us with the millage. That's going to help us with what our mill rate is going to look like. What? So in scenario 20, scenario 20 was a, um, a melting pot of a, a hiring freeze. It was a melting pot of uh, taking money that we can spend and use that for the shortfall that we could use um, fund balance to, to help us with the 24 budget. So I know those are more scenarios, but we're getting, I think we're getting the best out of 20 while we're leaving the 2% behind. Um, that's a great question. That's a so um, can I, I, I like the mayor's suggestion relative to percent change. And although um, 17 is more of a percentage increase than I would like, it has the lowest email rate. And so could we start there and then Bill is trying to figure out what gives the board 3%, more than 2%. Um, and if we incorporate those, those good bones of 20, and to the lowest rate, it goes down. And if you want to add more, um, it would potentially go down. I don't know about how much, um, but it would potentially go down and then you add the additional stuff like the capital improvement and some of the other stuff. I think we will land on a, on a, I guess, a reasonable um, percent increase because it's the lowest one of, of them all that remains. Although it's high for me, but it's the lowest one that we have 
less. And so with the savings, we can start incorporating, hopefully it goes down and then you can add, and then maybe we'll land on that sweet spot, just a recommendation. Okay, so looking at 17, would it be helpful to have Sharon go through the five scenarios or do we just want to start uh, taking some consensus on, amongst the scenarios and choose two or so? Okay. 20 is out. 20 is out because. And by hearing, that's funny that like 90% of the stuff that we make. Yeah, so it increased. So we can just increase it up to 3% at least, and then work from there. So what's in it, and we can work from 17 and 20. Yes, I think those 20 and then. I can go through 20 and explain what is in that scenario. And if the only stumbling block in 20 is that 2%, then it's easy to increase it and see where we are. And But keep in mind, the percentage change right now is 4.4. If we up that from 2%, that would work a bit. So I can do 20 and start making some changes to that and see where, where we're at. So let me summarize what's in 20. I was just going to say the only thing I don't have a problem is that it's almost like $2.5 million in fund balance. But it still gets us like the 16 point, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. it gets us back to the 16.5 that we all agreed on. So we're still where we are. Yeah. And I think that's because she used some of the, the capital fund balance and the debt fund balance to cover the, the 900000 gap that we have this year, which needs $1.4 from the uh, unassigned capital, right? Unassigned capital. That we roll over to this year is about 1.4, and then you add the 1.25 to help balance the budget with all of the other savings. So I think if you to come to Mahan's point, if you increase the board by a percent or two, however you all want, and then add the 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 capital improvement, I think you are where you are because you're gonna make it through the other scenarios where that has all of the savings. But I think you should yeah. hear what she has in here. Yeah. Uh, Let, let's hear Sharon break down the 1.25. Sharon, can you read that one? In scenario 20, we start off with the town manager um, base budget. We eliminated the CIP, the 500 CIP, like we did for many of the other scenarios. There's no budget mods for the 500,000, as you can see on the, the summary there. And the BOE, of course, is at 2%. Then if you go into the town operations budget, we take the town manager proposed budget. And in addition to removing the 200 CIP, the 500 um, budget mod, we were able to go into the town operations and find approximately 246,000 of areas that we can save funds. And if you'd like me to go through what those are, I could also do that for you. Yeah, but there's about 246,000 that we were able to find from the town ops. In there also, so we reduced it by the 246. Also, we reduced town ops by an additional 380,000. And that 380,000 is based on delaying the current open position for four months. There was a three months and a six months. Yes, all of, these. all of these. And, but I will let you know that there's some positions when we go through that at that point, in addition to public works and police, there are some other departments that are advocating for their positions that do bring in a lot of revenue. So we'll look at that at that point. But with everything, not picking out anyone in particular right now, just looking at all of those, um, with the exception of the foster care, we I didn't include the foster care because from Camilla's email, that was a mandatory 
um, position, but all the others looking at if we delayed hiring for three months, for four months, it would be approximately 380,000 in savings with that. So that's what I have reduced the town operations budget. Those are the factors in that. Can I, I would suggest we fix that number for town operations at that number. So whatever else we can do. Use the thirty-two thousand three forty-two as 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 town operations. Not the two million. I'm talking just about that one thing because that's the lowest number. You're talking about the thirty-two million three hundred forty-two thousand. Yeah. yeah. That would just town operations. Not that based on, on that. Well, that what she just described would be okay. Thirty-two million. Before you do, all nine for town operations. That's a bit of a little bit. But Sharon, I need you to explain the rest of that 1.25. I mean, you've given 246, 380. And what else comprises of that 1.25 million for the fund balance? And so, area 20. Okay, so the town operations include the 380. Yes. And so bring down to 32, there wasn't any. So now going down into um, using the fund balance of 1.25, that was one of the pieces that was there. The assigned fund balance in prior scenarios, you see we had 1.7 million carrying over from prior years. It was a suggestion that based on the projections that we have for fiscal year 2023, 20, we need about 921,000 to balance fiscal year 2023's budget. So instead of using it out of fund balance 2023, it was suggested to use some of the assigned fund balance capital. So that's why you see that dropped from the 1.7 to the 800,000. So that's one of the changes there. And the, and the reason why, I'm still on the scenarios 18, 19, and 20, but we're looking at scenario 20. Right. Yes. And if we go down under expenditures, sorry, under revenues. So we're down to the revenue section now. Because the only thing that changed in he's looking at this one, scenario twenty. Yeah, okay. looking at the chart with scenario twenty one. If you found one down the top of the line, she wouldn't So she's looking at one of those point out of All right, thank you. Thank you. Are you finished with that explanation? Um, I just want to make sure you're okay because I know you didn't have that. So. I have that yet. So now we're at the line nine and ten, eight and ten. We're looking at eight, the one point two five for for the fund balance. Then reducing the assigned fund balance capital, which is number nine, to eight hundred thousand nine eighty eight, to not use it any of the fund balance in 2023. So if we use the 921 to balance fiscal year 2023, it leaves less to carry over in fiscal year 2024 okay. for that. Council person to be from Brown. So what is the difference of using the assigned fund balance capital versus using the assigned fund balance capital? In using the general fund balance dollars, of course, that's going to affect your fund balance going forward. So if we use the 921 to balance out fiscal year 23, we have a smaller base to go to in fiscal year 24 and will affect anything else you do in fiscal year 24. If we use the assigned fund balance capital, or the assigned fund balance debt, that will not lower 
the your fund balance at the end of 2023. So you in essence will start off 2024 with a little higher fund balance um, to begin with. It's gone. These are one and done. Which for assigned fund balance, because we have those, we're carrying them forward. And as long as we don't use them, they're there to use forward. So as a matter of fact, do we keep carrying these things forward all the time or do we just use it not affect the fund balance and just clear them off the books? Sorry, council person for the president. Yeah, I guess my question, my question was, so the assigned fund balance capital is like a reserve for capital projects. Is, what's the def, what's the definition of aside fund balance capital the definition of aside fund balance debt service as opposed to general fund balance if i'm understanding it correctly when it was assigned it might have been stuff that was left over and was put in the assigned bucket but you could use it for other things as you deem going forward what i'm not sure about so don't misquote me is if that could only be used for capital going forward i don't think so because it could be used to balance the budget, but not necessarily for capital. And that's a legacy that's been going on for a few years, predates me in terms of how did we end up with that money in the past. So follow up, if I may, if we don't know if we can use it, it's there, how are we, we can, using it? Well, it can be used. But for what? It can, it can be used. Um, but cover general funds, what will be done is probably like how we move things from any capital you do an appropriation of uh, a fiscal year end transfer and move it so it's available in your general fund money to be used for that. The, the debt is because we had money that was left over from constructing bond. So it was labeled from where the money came from in terms of the debt piece. And then that could also be used to balance the budget. So it's basically, so essentially it's the same thing as the general fund, it's just labeled the fund. It's the same thing as a general fund, but when you use that, it won't affect the general fund balance. That is not tied, you have the fund balance and anytime you use something from the undesignated general fund, your fund balance will be lowered. That amount was already set aside and not counted in part of the general fund balance amount, general unassigned fund balance which is where you have the 15 um, to 20%. So when you're looking at the unassigned fund balance applied, that's different from these other two that was segregated and held in a separate account elsewhere. I guess my confusion lies in, <clears throat> so why, I mean, why isn't it all just in the general fund balance? Why, why do we have three different line items for fund balance when we could just take all that money, put it in fund balance, and we're back up to like 18, 19 percent. So I'm confused. I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm kind of just a little confused as to why we have three fund balances when we can just have one. When they have the sorry, when they have the reserve funds and it's there, it is segregated until it's a, it's used and it's a council decision for us to move it. So it stays there to designate why it was there. And it can be moved as long as the council gave the authority and the proper authorization to move it out of that and then put it into the general fund. And yes, it could be used, but for whatever reason, it never had to be used before. We never had to dip into fund balance. We didn't, so those kept carrying forward. Up to the point that we needed, yes, that could go there, but for whatever reason in the past, I'm not sure why it was kept there and not appropriated and move and let it sit in the general fund. I can't speak to the decisions on that that happened in the prior um, budget sessions. Okay. So they just kept carrying it forward each time until there's a necessity to move it okay. or to use it. Okay. Let's go to person Great. So she, she yeah. explained it all and that has been my um, assessment with the finance department and uh, the, the chair and, and Nancy over the last couple of um, weeks is that our fund balance position would be better off at $19 million and we wouldn't have to do all of these cuts if we would have just done that. But I went back and I looked at um, the videos from last year when Carrie was here and, and Stan was here um, and he did this. If you look at your, your budget materials from last year, you can see that it's on here. It's on here from last year. 
And when I was like, what? I asked the same question, I went back and I looked at the YouTube videos. And basically what I got from the discussion was that um, the $1.7 million was when the council of doing our deliberation asked them to go back and look at all of the, the capital projects that was not done. Anything over five or six years that wasn't done, we wanted you to tap that money, find that money, and put it in because it was a $5 million um, uh, delta between balancing the budget. So they found the $1.7 million. And as she mentioned, um, the debt service was from the school construction grant. So they paid reimbursement from school construction. They went out and they paid all of the fees from what they had to pay for school construction, and it was $621,000 remaining. So Carrie just put that as debt service as unassigned because there was no um, no actual purpose for it. So she kind of like lock box it in the in a manner, not because it has to be used for debt service, but to close the, the delta. And so my um, assessment was when I saw that Stanley put it in this year's budget, the reason why he put it in this year's budget is simple because he thought the revenue projections were going to be more. He was being a little bit aggressive. So then when Nancy came back uh, last week or week before last and showed that the revenue projection wasn't going to come in the way it was going to come, they moved. Well, Stanley moved. Let me back up. Stanley moved this money over forward because he thought we were going to have uh, better um, numbers. Mm -hmm. But when I caught that he double counted the American Rescue Act, he needed to cover that deficit. So he moved it over. He should have moved it over. He should have use it into fund balance so that our position could be more. So my argument was, is that this 1.7 million and this 621,000 should go towards our fund balance. And if it's not gonna to go towards our fund balance, then we need to use it to cover the Delta that we are, we are experiencing this year and then roll the additional $1.4 million over. And then when you look at this year's budget, the reason why uh, the 1.2 is in there is because it needs to balance the budget in scenario 20. So that's the rationale for for that. If that makes sense, hopefully that makes sense. Of course, I was going to make a point. The only difference in that money that was put out of the fund set and the regular fund balance is if you have a vote to take it out. And if we vote it, it would become undesignated. Yeah. Fund, and then we wouldn't have to worry about all this. I don't know why it's labor for that. What's it designated? We can't spend it right now. And so the council votes to just leave, which we can do. So I, I would suggest we consider doing that. And then we wouldn't have more discussion, and that might be used for any That's Right. Mrs. Deputy Mayor, really quick, that's not true because we used it in this year's budget as revenue to close the, the five million dollar deficit. And so what's happening now is from Stanley's to balance's budget. So what's happening now, we have that 921 that we exhibit. And so we should use that money to cover the 921 and don't touch our assigned fund balance, the assigned fund balance, so that we can move in this budget. Don't move it over to the next budget because we already, if you look at your your previous budget projections from the SGA, we voted this year to use that as revenue. Well, or one time dollars to close the $5 million deficit to balance the budget. And so we should use it to cover that 900,000 deficit. Deficit that we're not deficit, but the 900,000 that we need and our fund balance position will be better. And I think that's what she was attempting to do in, in Serenario 20. Right. Uh, and, that was a 2% right. budget. So that's included in one point two five. Yes. Well, okay. Yes. That's yeah. All right. So, yeah. You know, and, and are we ready to look at Sharon? You're going to walk us through these scenarios because that's what we tried to get to about 30 minutes ago. Take us through what did we say? Um, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, I believe. I thought we were and just going to take the 20. You got a corporation that's in 20. And then, you do yeah, that? Okay. I think that was a consensus to use 20. And I know the breaking point there was board of ed 2%. Um, if the reason why I was explaining all of these things that were in 20 is other than the board of ed, are you okay with all of what would you need to change? The board of ed piece is an easy change from the 2% to whatever percent you want. But all the other factors in, are you in agreement with those? So that's where we, we are. But that's, um, but that's in 32. That's in the um, time operations. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that's what Sean was saying. Regardless of what we do, 
are we okay with keeping the time operations at 32? And that's the decision you make. So that's why I told you what is in there. If there's some things you don't want to be in there, the positions, if all the positions are not to be considered, then that will drop to 380. If you want to use three months versus four months. So those are things that can change. Those are variables that can change in the town operation. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going back to Councilor Harris. Um, suggestion, are we all okay with this number of the town operation? Yeah. Either, either, sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there a consensus to use that yes, thirty two three forty two oh oh nine number, which is incorporated in scenario twenty under town operations mm -hmm. for the various scenarios? Okay. And what about it? I have a question. That scenario includes three hundred eighty thousand, correct? Yes. 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 Yeah. But. Then how are we going to make that number when we're not going with all three eight? Right. So question, like finance director, the deputy finance director. We have other departments, public works. How did I come in? Okay. So yeah, so so I, I'm I'm not good with that number because <clears throat> we're talking about being short two parole officers all the way until November, right? So they're already open positions. They've already been, they're already in there. <clears throat> the original, there they were people that they're not new hires. These are positions that already exist. We're already talking about the police department being shorthanded. We're talking about a four month freeze. We're not talking about a four month freeze from today. We're talking about a four month freeze from July 1st. Mm -hmm. So that means they can't even start a hiring process until November 1st. So you're going to be another six, seven months. You're going to be 10 months. By the time they get hired, train them, get all this stuff, you're going to be like another year short to police officers. Okay. Same thing with public works. You know, this is mowing season. You know, this is when they need all the guys on mowers mowing the how many hundreds of acres we have to mow every single every single day. These are the, this is the time when they need as many people on the mowers as they can, or town halls going to look like we need to you know hire somebody to hay it. You know, and and you're going to be short two positions until it's snow season when they're you know they're not they're they're not as in demand. You want to get stuff done around town. You're going to be short to maintainer positions. Um, you're going to be short a mechanic. You know, there's, there's a lot of positions in here that you could. I, I, you, maybe you can hold off on a fleet manager. Maybe you can hold off on uh, some of the library positions. Maybe you can hold off on an assistant building official for a little bit or something like that. But I mean, huh? Oh well, I'm just yeah. I know I understand they're raising revenue, but I'm I'm saying there's there there are some essential. I mean. I think patrol officers are an essential position position right now, especially with the increase of, of, of theft and stuff like that going on over at you know Capacol and Home Depot. I mean, I mean, this is I mean, I understand we're trying to find ways to save money, but yeah. we have we have to yeah. find common sense ways to save money and not just just gut the town of right. all the positions that they, they possibly need. That, that's a good point. And, and... Maybe we should uh, hear from the acting town manager and look at these open positions because I know, for example, at our public safety meeting last night, uh, from the police department, we were told that they are 11 people short right now, but there are only two vacancies. There are three people, three recruits in academy, three off office of field training, two on light duty, one of attorney. So those folks will be onboarded at some point, hopefully soon. But those two vacancies obviously are unfilled positions and uh, are sort of adding to the fact that they're not able to fully staff and, and do all the things they need to do. But Sharon, do you want to you want to take some time to go through these open positions and we'll talk these through or is this are we getting are we here too soon? Um so the open positions, I think the sheet that you have is not the correct one. They printed the one they got directly from Rosa and not the one that I had saved. So we're going to make sure, I'm just making sure that they have a correct one okay. um, for that because the one that I used didn't have. 
So while we do that, if we are applying the numbers from scenario 20 to 1.25, can you just apply 1.25 for the various, the level four? Would that be easier for you? I can apply the one that you find in fund balance or the, the, the same fund balance. Same as two. Except the lower your base budget number. Except the higher. The lower your base budget number. Yeah. And then you can see what you want them to do. Okay. And then you can use that. Do we need to take, you need a couple of minutes here? Yeah, I just give me a minute to make sure this is the right one because well, right. I'm different than all the people here. I'm just saying. saying. But what I will suggest, though, is once I go through this, just take one item at a time. Perfect. The board of ed, what that's percentage. The town operation, what that percentage. And with the town operations, the the amount. That is because if I'm going all the way back and forth, it's I feel like I'm going in a circle. And, and I agree that the mayor's point of view on the uh, the percent change on taxes is going to be. Very important. All right, so why don't we take five minutes? Mary, are you okay with that? Yeah, yeah, sounds good. All right, five minute break. We'll come back at 7 16. Yeah.
All right, well, what's the result of sharing, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so to, to, to resume, Board of Ed is at 2%. What would be a consensus and what we think that percentage increase should be? Yeah. I don't know if everyone heard that. He said 4.25. No, yeah, I was I was gonna say exactly that. Four point two five. I think uh something we may be able to rally around. I don't know if we're gonna take a strong pull, Deputy Mayor. Okay, I'll just go around. I would like to more. I understand the situation that you're in, so I can definitely um Okay. Thanks, Sports and Harrison. Uh, I would be in agreement with that as well. I'm certainly concerned at 3%, and I believe that I would be uh, that we would be going in the right direction okay. with that, and hopefully with the changes in 20. That would reduce the overall amount. So, yeah, well, I'm surprised. Council Court's a fair. I um, could support that um, if it's in scenario 20 with the savings to see if, um, if, if, if it has all of the incorporations of the, the savings in 20 and we do the 4.25, I can. Um, I I could support that. Just because one of the kind of impact increase on that I, but I think what we're trying to do is come up with uh, an agreement on a percentage for BLE. Mm -hmm. And right now, I think the council person there. Yeah, 4.25. Yeah, You're on board? Yeah, I can. Yep. Okay. Council person yeah. flyers. I mean, after around three and a half. Okay. Mayor, are you on? I am. Um, I, I hear what we're trying to do, but our my position is trying to balance the burden on the taxpayers. And that's including the need for services and supporting and investing in the Board of Education. And so I don't think that we should increase taxes above 5%. That is our bird's eye view from a council perspective. Within the tax increases, we should be setting the parameters on services for the town and services for the Board of Ed. And so from a bird's eye view, 5% is the maximum increase I'm willing to put on our taxpayers. That's where I'm at now. I don't know what that looks like for the Board of Ed. I don't know what that looks like for cutting more town services. So I, that's kind of where I am. It's kind of arbitrary for me to say, here's where the board is without saying from a high level standpoint, here's the maximum tax increase that we are each willing to put on our taxpayers that own homes. So if we start with that, then I guess the answer is, I, I don't know where we are with the Board of Ed because I cannot support increasing taxes right now above 5% with the scenarios that we have to discuss today. All right, I think uh, Sharon wants to say something before doing that, Sharon, I'll go on the record and say, I will uh, put the 4.25, assuming when we run the numbers and see where we are, we may have to make some adjustments from, but from a group level, uh, I'm, I'm on board if we can make it happen. Yeah. What I wanted to say, each time we make an adjustment, what I can do is let you know what the resulting change is so you see where we are at that point in time. So at this point in changing VOE from 2% to 4.25%, the mill rate is now at 336.55, which is a 5.84% increase. And the fund balance is still 16.35. So 
that one more time. Repeat those numbers. Mill rate is at 36.55, which is a 5.84% increase. The fund balance, of course, um, goes down and is now at 16.35%. So that's where we are with that big increase. With the 1.25 in use and fund balance. What's the number again? 36.5. So, Sharon, if you did 4%, what, what happens to the fund balance? With 4%, the fund balance is at 16.37. Did it change too much? Going from 4.25 down to, to 4%. What if we do his quarter scenario? Yes. Since, uh, council for uh, three, what if we said three and a quarter? Just right three, three and a half, three point five. Just, I don't know what it is. Three point five. Three point five. Three point five. Three point five. Mill rate is at 36.38, 5.36% change. Fund balance is at 16.41. Well, the main thing you're looking at, we have, we're in one of the other scenarios down there, we're using 1.25 to balance the budget in fund balance. So that's where we are with that. Okay, Councilperson Flores. So, so we're talking talking about percentages to the to the to the to the community. I, I think it's important that this board realize that we did a 2.95% decrease last year in taxes. We backed it up almost 3% last year. Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. Two point. Yes, it was very stupid. And I tried to make that point last year, but nobody would listen to me again. But I mean, so if you want to increase 5%, you're basically just going 2% over what it was the year before. If you do 5% over it was the year, the, the, the previous year, you know, going back, going back, it, it brings you, you can bring your mill rate up to uh, like 37.35%. 30, uh, 35, you know, the mill rate is like 37.35. That's a 5% over the additional 2.95. I mean, so it's going to be a big increase from last year, but not such a big increase from the year before that. So I mean, you know, we, we, we went out of our way last year to save the people money, which I didn't think was a great idea, but now we have to kind of kick that can down the road and now it's a little bit bigger can. So, I mean, I think we look, if, if we're looking for all of you who are trying to get reelected, we're looking for a narrative. It's only 5% more than you were paying there and you're still like paying less than you were paying in 2018. So that's right. that's just some food for thought. Sure. Are you able to back in some numbers with a fund balance at 16.5? Would you put that in? Tell us what some of the other numbers would have to. There's go. so many moving parts, and to do that on the fly because it's a uh, revolving piece to get to the fund balance. What is the base budget going to be? And so it's it's difficult without knowing some of the things that feed down into it. Right. To start from the bottom up here is not feasible. Right. I'm just nervous about Sorry. that fund down so I'm below. Next year, you want to start. Okay. Councilman Lefebvre just reference uh, scenario 15, which gets us to a 16.5 fund balance. So, so if we did that at the time off, are we going to be saving that? Are we going to want to put the 1.25 into that? So I think if we're saying that we're going to, if we're going to look at um, scenario 15, 
Around to that kind of percentage, we're looking at what we should get that one last year. That's what I, I asked earlier. If you could you know, incorporate that 1.25 into the other scenarios, I point out something about that 1.25. Please do. I have actually using 1.25 to violate using fund balance, policy budget. Anyway, it's a normal as far as the bond boundary is going to say that using that over and over again is a very bad thing. It by itself, or what bad keeps that so I mean, what we gain from that it's makes us look bad. I'd rather I'd rather I'd rather dip the fund balance and result and have us showing that we use the fund balance and on the front. So in the scenario 15, there is no fund balance. Okay, I'm saying. So if you just take the saving using fund balance use, if you're not putting that in, that's fine. Right. I was just saying that part would work. Right. So if you just take the saving in scenario 15, okay. where are we at? And just since we're focusing on 15, you've identified that we're not using any fund balance, but also note that. There's no CIP and there's no um, budget mod there, and the BOE is at five percent. So let's add the savings to scenario fifteen. Yeah, drop the five percent to BOE to. I drop that to. We said four point five for now. Oh, so the scenario is four Okay. So scenario 16 at 4% and add the savings minus the savings. Okay. Right. Not yet. Not yet. We can get back to the four. four. Let's just see what it looks like at 4%. Yeah, just so it Okay, so scenario 16, Board of Ed, 4%. The town budget is at 32342009, which includes which includes no CIP for fiscal 24, no budget mod for fiscal 24, town savings of 246,000 and 380,000 from four months of hiring freeze. That's where we are for 16. And I will, the results from that is mill rate of 36.64, a 6.11% increase, we're not using any fund balance. So the fund balance percentage is at 16.69%. Six nine. Wow. Yes. What's the number of the number of the We're using the same amount that was in 20. Oh, <laughs> But, pardon? And the tax for certain 6.11? 6 6.11% increase. How much money do we need to drop it? Oh, just. House portion fair. How much do we need to drop the actual change of set by 1%? So instead of 6.11, how many more savings would we need to get to 5.11%? So you're looking at changing the town savings or the board of ed? Where did you want me to apply that? So change? See if we can get the 
Would... You just want to know a dollar amount, not from any specific area? No, I would love to see it from the board side. I know we have a consensus, but I'd just like to see it from the board side. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even have a good answer. Yes. So, was there a, a I would an answer? I'd love to see it on the board side. Oh, it's not 1% of our data. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be 3%, right? No, it's already 3%, right? A million dollars is 2% on the board. That's right. If we reduce board of that to 3%, yeah, we're at 5.47 increase with a 36.42%. If we bring that down to 2.5 or 2%, I know your 2% was a no start to begin with, so we wouldn't, we wouldn't go there. So at 3%, that's where it brings us 36.42 or 5.47 increase, yes. All right, so you, you did 16 at 4%. No, yeah, I did four percent, and then I change it to three percent. So, where would you like me to go back to four percent? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's stay with that. So we're back to the thirty-six point six four mil with a six point one one percent increase, and fund balance is at sixteen point six nine. Percent. I asked. You said you found five hundred twenty-five thousand one step capital. Yes. Well, you point out that we needed to spend hundred thousand of that. So that's roughly two hundred thousand. So it means it, uh, three, about three twenty-five. Um, so that would be three twenty-five. Yes. Is that in here at all? No, we haven't touched that part yet because as we're going down, we haven't gone past one or two in terms of scenarios yet. So we needed was to now we were at the board of ed. Now we needed to go into town ops. We agreed that at the town ops we were going to take out the budget model, the CIP, the town savings of 246 and positions. We could add that 325 there, but at the same time, I think we also wanted to visit it, the, the freeze to see whether they amount for four percent is adequate or what positions we need so that's where we we need to go at the next at the next step so if we want to focus on line two town operations and then since we're good with the four percent for um board of ed so as i mentioned the 32 is there the you will have on your position sheets the most recent one that was sent it shows the positions that are being considered for free hiring freeze, and what the savings would be at three, four, and six months. Um, I will defer, I don't know, point of order if they uh, prefer to defer to the town manager to talk about which of these positions must stay in, and then we'll see how much savings we'll make from that, in addition to us adding that 325 from the the CIP savings. So if we could focus on the, the positions, just point of new positions for fiscal year 23, the STEAM and the Board of Cultures, don't focus on that. That's already part of the 246 of the town savings. We sure. eliminated that off the bat. Sure. All the ones for fiscal year 24 proposed budget, those were eliminated when you eliminated the budget mod. So the only area to focus on is a section in the middle that says current open positions. That's where you'd like to focus. Right. And that shows all the positions that are currently open, not been filled, maybe close to being filled, different variety of stages. So if you want to really look at that so we could pin down that number. Right now I have 380. It was rolling down from the 392 that you're seeing there under the four months column. Okay. All right, well, I want to... Uh... Councilperson Harrington and Sharon would like for you to go through it. And then McLaren will go to Shelter. 
I have a question. The assistant director of building in that use, isn't that a position that has already been built? No, not yet. No. We have a temporary person in that use right now. So someone in the assistant building. We're a follow up reader. Uh, no, I, I just, I thought, uh, so, uh, so there are uh, uh, in a temporary position. Uh, 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 Sharon, uh, the uh, uh, acting finance director, did you tell me earlier anything over four months will affect the critical uh, operations of the central services to the town? Is that correct? So I would like for us not to even consider six months because we know that's going to affect the day-to-day the -day operation of critical services delivered to our residents. So I would just like us to look at three and four. I'll leave that to. All right. Let's start over to. Uh, yeah, the time yeah, the Because there's still some provisions that may not even make can survive the three months, but overall. All right, going down the power building bridge, um, you have four library positions. I think we probably can hold on the library positions right now because the library will be going to one facility. Mm -hmm. We agree with that? Yeah. yeah. The fleet manager probably can go for three months. So, final question the library positions we can hold. Uh, so, we could do a combination of the three, four, and six months. So, the library positions, and I could get a total as a mixture three, four, or six on the library positions. Let's see. No, why don't we start off with six? Well, I thought we said four. Yeah. But she just the time we didn't want to spend that we can get the one of the facility. So if she's been in the one of the facility, that's one out of the space where it's not possible. Oh, so that baby. Yeah, okay. All right, I can do that. So we're good with the library. And uh, we want the fleet manager, we can hold off on the fleet manager for three months. We're going to go with the vehicle mechanic technician and the um, two maintainers. We said go with the, we need those are critical. Yes, please. The facilities manager, we can hold off for three months. The building department, the assistant building official, and the assistant director of building and planning. So we need those positions. And I believe we made an offer, but I just told the rest of the until after the budget meeting on the um, assistant director. But we need those positions. I believe for the assistant HR director, I believe uh, Rosa interviewed and was going to make an offer, and I also told her to hold on that for the assistant HR director. How long? Which do you think we hold on? What's your position with respect to timing on that position? If we had to wait three, four, or six months? Three months. Police officers, we need. We talked. We talked about a police position already. That's a need. The after school activity specialist, we need. And one of the uh, departments. That, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh. Look, are you finished with the list? Those are all the positions. Well, the list is finished, but what I see missing from the list is finance department. Okay. 
All right. Let's go. Because some months it wasn't really Okay. All right. Thank you. So just because we're trying to uh, fix it, is it possible that the maintainer too? I, I see that they have two positions. Is it possible to get one now and probably join four months? Well, I believe then we'll be able to see better with that, but as um as Council Collider says, we don't know how the town's gonna look. But Dan can speak better to that if you'd like to be done. Right. I, I, I don't know if it's a little bit okay or how to write. So I'm just saying, we can try to just stretch one out maybe three months. And maybe I'm going to be optimistic that it will be a good person. But if you don't, better. Can you address that? Yeah, so currently, right now, I have two maintainer twos who are on workman's compensation, no, no scheduled return dates. I have two vacancies since January 1st. I'm down four maintainers. So as Sharon spoke to a fleet manager, by the time I have, we, I got final interviews next Tuesday. You know, our managers are important. Um, but quite honestly, we just had a vacancy with our facilities manager. By the time I advertise, I find qualified applicants, I interview and I hire, it's probably six weeks to two months. So you're asking me for a month, all right? And I, I am giving back a lot in my budget. Um, maintainers, the impact of that, you're gonna see immediately. Those are the guys who are cutting the grass, maintaining our buildings, the labor force for the town. So honestly, um, you're the council, but it's gonna be, it, you're gonna see it. You're gonna see it and you're gonna see it right away. The maintainer and I have two maintainer two positions. Right, I see that. Vacant. Both critical. Both critical. I'm asking for five more in a budget modification. In 2014, the park study recommended five people nine years ago, and I'm down. I'm not getting my my five, and I'm down four. So, okay, want to stay here for a second? Oh, there's some problem. <laughs> so once again, I know. So I honestly believe that everything that we have here is important and needful and necessary. Might not be critical, but important, needful, and necessary. So if we're going to do that, our assistant building official, I know that we need assistance because if the director goes, then and there's no assistant. I get that. But with the assistant building official and the assistant director of building and land use, can we stretch that out? Three months. No. So, hold up. Wait, so can you respond to that? I don't really know. Like, give us some. You want to start with the people that are on the information? The line at the end? Justin. Justin. I you know, I thought about the marketing prices. That's my And I believe, oh, okay. I, I believe that. I honestly believe that most of the departments on here are extremely critical to what we do and to what we ask you to do. Because if we're seeing that the graph is high, they are calling you. You think what's going on? Okay. And someone's trying to get a new thing from me or something, and they can't, and they know our number, they're going to call us and say, What's going on in the building? So we do understand that. I think we are at a crossroads, might be in a laundry, stuck between a rock and a hard way, however we want to put it, and we're just trying to figure it out. And we're not trying to create it all wrong. So I just want to make that clear. Again, not trying to it at all. Well, I was just going to maybe give you some information that may help in your decision. Um, some of the numbers I shared with you were at um, $100 million in construction value for the year so far. We've been consistent. I said this during my presentation at 1.3, 1 1.1 1 .1, um, in revenue. Um, 
one thing I forgot to mention was we have a we had a shared position between Simsbury and Bloomfield, which we eliminated in that budget and promoted within. We have not yet replaced that position. So essentially, we've been down a half a position for um, 10 months and we're struggling um, with these kind of liabilities. You're talking about uh, 20 million dollars of liability per FTE. Um, per person, as compared to West Hartford, where you're dealing with about uh, eight employees or FTEs at about a lot, their liability. Last I read the numbers for 2021 was around 16 million. So you can see our liability is a lot higher for safety. And remember, the umbrella is public safety. So um, to get that half a position back, we would be basically um, to get this full time position filled. We would be that half position and another half a position on top of that. So we would be almost full staff to where we were before we lost a position to Simsbury. So you're speaking to the assistant building. Yeah. Person. Yeah. All right. Thanks. So in Justin LaFountain, Director of Building and Land Use. Um, so in terms of the Assistant Director, um, most of you guys know, you know, we staff, I think, Bindi was here, she could tell me, but 13 boards and commissions. Um, I'll give you an example. Last week, last Tuesday night when I was here, I had to have my interim director do a town planning and zoning meeting. I can't be in two places at once. And I think, Council McClure, I think you joined in just like I did when I got home. <laughs> and then I was there until 1145, just like you. Um, there is so much happening in this department right now. We have the 10-year plan of conservation development. We have all the development in town. We have the affordable housing plan. Um, you know, currently, we're trying to make all that work, but... It's not sustainable with with this level of staffing. We need this staff. Um, you know, I was brought in as the assistant director back in November. Then I was made the interim director. Now I'm the director, and part of the reason I took that was because I knew I was going to be able to have a staff. You know, an assistant director to back me up on things. Um, so it's in order to keep the development moving in town. Um, you know, we really need to really need to focus our energies on that. And and again, it's it's all your decision in the end. You you control the 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 budget, but um, it's it's really an important department. And I, I hope that doesn't get overlooked. Uh, who do I have next? Uh, Councilor suppliers. So here's a here's a proposal um, just to put in front of everybody. Um, we're talking about carrying three hundred and twenty five thousand dollars over from SIP projects that aren't going to be done. One hundred, the two hundred thousand dollars is already accounted for. Um, so three hundred twenty-five is what the balance of the five twenty-five is. Um, why don't we just? We're talking about a two hundred thousand dollars savings of operation, another three hundred thousand dollars in in potential positions. We'll take the three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, put it back into the town budget. Let the town manager decide what positions need to hire what things we've cut out of some of the budget modifications that are critical and let her make the decision as to what is really needed so that we're not picking off librarians or you know facilities managers give her the discretion to use the 325,000 the way she wants to um in a, in a way so she can hire the people that she believes are critical Put back some of the budget modifications that you know are probably smaller, and you know that fifteen thousand dollars for IT for that little for that software program to make everything work smoother. You know, so, you know, something some of those things would probably would be very helpful that we could we could let her make those decisions on, and then we don't have to nitpick each little line item, and we can move on to other stuff. Sounds good. Uh, before I, I want to get the council person behind. Well, I just I skipped them. <laughs> uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I just wanted to know what does you know if we were to go one. I'm in full agreement with uh, the acting town manager. Um, 
uh, recommendations here. What if we were to follow exactly those recommendations? What what does that look like? What do the numbers pan out to be? Um, what what is that? What is that three? Is it three twenty five? Or can we can we see what that looks like and then adopt that? Where we drag out the you know the librarian positions to the month recommendations that the acting town manager has and the other positions as well and fill where it's needed is that possible so yes we, so can we say that thank you so uh, can we just can a technician maintain the two assistant building official assistant director of building land use Patrol officers, foster care, activities coordinator, and after school activity specialists. And putting a hold on the four library positions, the food manager, the facilities manager, and the assistant director of HR. Right. right. So, so yes. take off, eliminate the the fleet position, not in terms of eliminating position, but taking it out of the hiring. Bucket, the freeze bucket, I think. Uh, what else? Oh, sorry. Um, so, are you asking what to take out of the freeze bucket or what to put in the freeze bucket? The positions that are needed that we will we won't freeze. Okay, so we're not going to be yeah, freezing. Sure. We're not going to be freezing the. Copy twice. We're not going to be freezing the vehicle mechanic technician. The two maintainers. Okay, so the vehicle maintain the position we're not freezing, okay? Yep. The maintainers we we won't freeze. Yep. So yes. two positions: assistant building official. Um, um, assistant building position we won't freeze. The assistant director of building and land use. Okay. Uh, the two patrol officers. Okay. Foster care activities coordinator. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that was already. Oh yeah. Taken off the yeah. yeah. My apologies, an after school activity specialist. So that's needed. Okay, so we yeah. those and, and we, we added those back in the rest. We put in the freeze bucket. Uh, we put in the freezer. Uh, what what does that look like? For us? So we are left with freezing the librarian position, the fleet manager position, the facilities manager position, the assistant director of HR. Correct. All righty. And First, I'll start with all on the cohesive time frame. For three months, it was saved 138,000. For four months, 184,000. For six months, 277,000. That's the base. And I know some we could freeze longer than the others, but I just wanted to show you what they all are on the same time frame. I'll repeat that three months, 138,000, four months, 184,000, six months, 277,000. So based on the acting town manager's recommendation, the librarians, we can freeze out to about six months. So that's still the end of December. Mm -hmm. So we'll start mix. I'm sure the library construction is probably still going on at that point. Um, the facilities, the fleet manager is three months. The Facilities manager, again, that's three months. Assistant HR director, three months. And I think that's it. Okay, so with that total combination, we're looking at 189,000. One hundred eighty-nine thousand. Yes. So, look, Sharon, let me ask you something. Uh, Councilperson Pelias, uh, his suggestion of the three hundred and twenty-five thousand. Where does that come from? Where's that three twenty-five coming from? It doesn't come from the SIP projects. 
the balance. The balance. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we have 525,000 now. We are slicing out the 200 that we need for the reval, and it leaves um, roughly on a, three roughly 325 three. unallocated. All right. So, in scenario, going back to scenario 16. Before you do that, acting town manager, are you comfortable with that? That allocation for 325, are you using that to uh, fill some of those positions? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, Council for some merit. Even after we slim this down to what appears to be acceptable. Also, we want to put the 324 hour into so, in case you need to do a whole thing, you want to change it. Tell us what. No. Well, what is it? Frank, go ahead. Council. Wise. So I'll propose. So you're you're talking about um, the number was the delta three twenty five. So you're, you're you, yeah the delta of the three twenty five. So based on what share of uh, the town manager has proposed is um, if I do the math about one hundred and fifty six thousand um, dollars. $156,000 of salaries that start right off the bat, approximately. I'm just doing quick math, but I might be off $10,000. Um, so you'd be, you'd be hiring the positions that she suggested immediately. You'd be filling those positions immediately, the ones that she she, she suggested. The non-freeze. The non-freeze ones. Yeah. And then she would have the, the, she would have the autonomy to use a little bit of money if she needs to unfreeze a couple of the other positions, okay, and then she and then and then she would also have a little bit of money to um, do some of the maybe even some of the bod the small budget modifications that we've gutted too. So we're putting some money back into the town budget that we've completely gutted. Okay, I'm just saying we haven't saved much money. No, so going on next. So, okay. So, please, I know it might be late and I've had a long day, but let's say that we hire the two um, uh, let's say we hire the land use, the assistant director for building and land use at 119000 We hire the patrol officers at 185,000, we hire the technician at 78,087. How much is that? 387,797. So where is the 325? 325 is just in three months. So we're only talking, we're not talking about eliminating these positions completely no, for the whole year. We're, right, we're, we're, hiring we're, right now. we're just talking about freezing. No, we're not freezing them. We're going to hire them. Right, but what you're not. You're only. You're only spending. Right. You're going to hire them regardless. Right. Right. You're only. You're only talking about the savings of the few months here. So you're only. The only thing you're spending is this. You're not spending all of that right off the bat. You're just spending the extra savings. So yes, all of those salaries add up to more than three hundred and twenty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. But you're hiring them; you're going to end up hiring them anyway. Mm -hmm. All your all your spending right now is the the money you would have been saving by not hiring them. Okay. Right. So so instead of having these are the numbers that you're. I'm sorry. This, these are the numbers that you're saving. So you're looking at the fact that we're not going to wait for the four months. We're going to hire them now. Three months. In, right. in for three months. So now the only thing that we're, we're, we're picking up is three months. Right. And then the rest of it is down the line. Right. Okay. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Smart. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure. Oh, oh of course. I want, I want to hear what Sharon, I want to hear what Sharon has to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to hear and then I can go after. I want to hear what Sharon I'll support you for a skip to so I want to make sure I get there. Uh, <laughs> I, this is going to be like rough, but like. <laughs> Why are we asking the board to look at non essential pets, but it's not going to affect the teachers and the kids? 
to save someone and help us do this if we're going through this exercise for every department. And we've heard how revenue generated departments are going to need support and help. And then we, I know we said the library is consolidated if you want, but then I see that the assistant directors and the folks who put in the library here saying that they got to be because they're going to be any extra people to communicate to the community where their new location is because it's in a secluded portion of it. And so I know it, this is a deal breaker for most people on this council, but I'm like, I'm not going to tell the board that it's too, but I just think, as a fact, the deputy mayor's point is, you know, I was 4% or 4.3% going to hurt their 8.8%. Hurt quite a bit. Like, I don't think we all need to be partners in this, and if the town has to significantly um, take a, a dramatic, and I think everybody should, because we're all going to get phone calls this summer about the library movement and not being able to ask us. Folks are going to call us when we know classes and cut in high school and elsewhere. Um, so I'm just concerned that this is hurting us. We're, we're just really taking a step back. And so I'm, I'm, I'm getting concerned because we're literally dying in the town for what at the expense of what? Well, right. That's just my, that's, you know, people won't call the town. They're not going to call the board there. And we're going to be, we're going to be in a pickle because we don't pass a budget. That doesn't give them the flexibility to do things that they want to do. So when parks aren't cut, when people can't get their building permits, when people can't access the library for printing or whatever the case may be, when there are people doing all types of stuff and we're getting these emails, and most of us, I assume, will be on uh, the campaign for us, as everybody said, we're going to hear from them because for what? So that's just my opinion. And, and I know you said we wanted to hear from Sharon before your comment. Well, I, thought, right? I can make the comment. No. Okay. Um, I still do want to hear from Sharon, though. Um, but I'll make my comment now. I'm I'm optimistic, as, or I'm hoping uh, to counsel to Bethan Brown's point that she brought up uh, before that maybe a few months down the line, there may be something that comes up that will allow that flexibility for the town manager to uh, perhaps shorten some of these, the, the, the length of some of these freezes. Um, but I would say for right now, I, I think we should just move forward with the town manager's recommendation. She's, she's made it, and this recommendation will make sure that, you know, uh, that, the, uh, that the facilities around Bloomfield are maintained at least with, uh, at least with supporting uh, two maintainers and that some of our um, other uh, mandated or, or essential services are, are there. I, you know, and I'm, I'm just hopeful that perhaps we can, as we get further down the line, that we will find some money for um, some of these other positions. But I, I think this is a, a hard pill we'd have to swallow for now and hope that something better will come in the future. Thank you. Uh, Sharon, when you go that before, I just wanted to address Councilperson McClary's uh, comment about the Board of Ed. And it's my understanding through the charter provisions is we don't have any jurisdiction over what they do with respect to non-essential employees. I mean, we're a body to provide support, a budget amount, and that's sort of where we end unless the charter changes. But right now, I don't think we have jurisdiction to have them come in and tell us about their non-essentials. I mean, they can tell us about it, but I don't, I don't know what we could do other than provide them, you know, support. And again, I agree, I don't know how we find the magic number to say our 4% or 4.5% would do X, Y, and Z, but uh, we're caught in an awkward position of just having to allocate without really knowing all the, the details, other than what they provide in their budget. Uh, but I'm sorry, Sharon, can you proceed? At this point, at this point, it almost seems irrelevant. I'm going three council persons back up. Okay. It was a response to um, uh, Councilor DeBeef and Brown. When you're asking about the positions, I just wanted to let you know where, so where are we going to find the money from? Remember, all those positions are currently in the budget. So it's not like we have to find new money to fill those open positions. They're already in the budget for fiscal year 24. And as Councilor Politis mentioned, all we're doing is out of those positions, can we save a few dollars out of the lanes from of them? 
So that was just my response I wanted to make to her. So can you tell us, will that change uh, your numbers with respect to uh, scenario 16 with the modifications of the maze? Okay, so um, I'll recap. Board of Ed still at 4%. And with the town budget, we're taking the originally proposed, we're taking out 200,000 for CIP. We're taking out 500,000, no, 200,000 for budget mod, 500,000 for CIP. We're taking out 246,000 that we can save on the town operations, excluding positions. Based on the exercise we just did in terms of freezing some of them, which would save us 189,000, taking out that 189 and then taking out the 325 remainder from this year's CIP. Those are the changes that are there. And when, did I miss anything from all the requests? Okay. You're good. 326, 189, 225. 325. Okay. So that will result in uh, overall town operations reduction of 4.99%. So board of it an increase of 4%. Town operations a decrease of 4.99%. That leaves us with a mill rate of 36.58%, which is a 5.94% increase. Fund balance, is at 16.71%. So again, mill rate is at 36.58%, an increase of 5.94%. Fund balance, 16.71%. Okay, I'm making some progress. Council person flies. So I've heard of a lot of talk about equity on the town side and the Board of Education side. So can we just review those numbers? We're going yeah. up 4% on the board and we're gutting those town 5%. Mm -hmm. We'll gain some perspective on that for just a second. Okay. okay. Any other kind of council person, Mayor? I would like to point out what we did last year. We increased our spending our total spending is seven and a half percent, and we only increased the board budget by four point five percent. Now the board budget is half of the town total budget, so that means we increase the town side, the non non uh, board part of the budget, ten point five percent, ten point five percent, and we increase them of. Uh, so you're, you're looking at just a narrow part of all the answers in the town operation. We have all of this. What we've been trying to do over the years, what we've tried to do is do a thin full increase on both sides. And that's what we did last year. With this year, you increase the board 4%, and you put a 7% tax increase. You're doing the same thing. You're actually funding the town side more than you are the board side. So, I mean, you're looking at just operations. Yeah, but that's just this year and just part of the time side of the years. Just a reminder, you know, neither of us did that because we've all done that. Wow. Well, we were smart. <laughs> all right. So, so let, let's circle back and sort of see if we have any consensus around this 6.1. That's how it goes. 6.11, is that the percentage entry? 5.94. Oh, that's a new one. I'm sorry, right. Five, eight. Yes. We're folks doing with top of course, Muhammad. Um, yeah, that I, I like that number. I do want to see um, what that number looks like with the Laurel Park study included. Any other comments? As well, oh, as well as my apologies, as well as um, ah, oh, geez, what's it called? I'm sorry. There's one more thing with the guardrail replacement. Thank you. As well as with the guardrail replacement, see what that looks like. Um, added. But the three hundred and twenty. Oh, sorry, I'm not sure coming. 
Yeah, hold on. Let, let well, those, those funds cover it then, perfect. Let, let me go to Councilperson Polites and also say that with respect to Laurel Park, there were other residents here in other parts of town, town who are having flooding issues. And so I think, you know, we need to keep in mind about choosing one area over another with respect to needed maintenance. But Councilperson Polites. Question first and then a comment. The $325,000 uh, of SIP is coming off of the budget, correct? You, we're, not use, we're not allowing the town manager, in your scenario, we're not allowing the town manager to use that at her, dis at her discretion. That's coming out of the savings and reducing the, the amount of the budget, correct? That 325 is money we have in fiscal year 23. I understand. And because we can use that in fiscal year 24, we're reducing the amount of requests for fiscal year 24. Okay, then I would like to see, I would like to see that money in the budget, but not reducing. I want to I want to see it what the numbers look like with it added to the town but to the town operations budget and not subtracted from the town operations budget. So I would like to see it moved into the operations, but not subtracting from op op operations, just leaving it in operations. Unaccounted for? Well, unaccounted for, I mean, you can use it, it can go against the, the positions that we're talking about funding, and then there, that would leave approximately $125,000 to maybe do some of the like I said, the budget modifications that really seem to be inexpensive and really made a lot of sense, like the fifteen thousand dollars for IT to have that that software program that's a workstation, right, or a help desk, as they called it. You know, some you know, a little bit of money to do those little things to make right. operations smoother. Okay, so where are folks on the five point nine four? I mean, that's really. Yeah, I we, I'd like to hear from that because I think that's how that's a question. Well, even if we don't do what I originally recommended, I think there, there still are a couple things here. Um, to uh, Council Politis' point, the um, the the update that he was regard that he was speaking about the garter replacement. There's a hazardous tree removal uh, for twenty five thousand. These are uh, low hanging fruit that we can pick at. That's 25,000 25, for the hazardous tree removal, which benefits the entire town, not just one area, uh, to the deputy mayor's point. Um, and the guard replacement, once again, um, these are safety items, things that ensure that as we're traveling through town, uh, that our as our neighbors are traveling through town, that they're, that they're safe. Um, so I would at least hope that we can find the $50,000 or add that fifty thousand dollars in, which I don't think is going to move the ticker too much. So, are, are we at the point where we need to sort of sleep on this and come back with some suggestions of what we might add? Yeah, we can do that. And clean sheets. Um, when we the board of the board of I'm just concerned at the 5.94% increase um, in our taxes. And I get the fact that we, we, we need to raise taxes. I get the fact that we need to inch closer to where we need to be. I think eating a pie one slice at a time is a whole of eating and kind of stuff the whole pie. So I don't know how we try to get a little bit closer um, without it being a burden, right? And I understand that the things that we have put back in, the positions that we have put back in are extremely meaningful, right? And I also understand that some of the VIP that we've left out that we need to consider. So I think if we can start with some clean sheets and um, maybe be a little bit more thoughtful, um, three thirty six point five eight percent um in our millage is a lot better than where we were the other night at thirty eight point one two percent, right? So I do believe that we have made some strides on tonight. Um, I think we just need to think about it a little bit more. I don't know. Once again, 
I do believe and I do hope that we will look better in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. While we can't bank on it, I think it, it can be it can be a helpful exercise. Thank you. Um, so I've heard from folks that are watching um, over the last couple of days, um, you heard it in public safety about tree comment. Um, that's important to us. That is one of the probably the number one uh, issue that public works in the police department outside of cutting up the grass and plowing it here. Um, but I hear the 5.9% increase in taxes is a lot of the and the definite theory has been seen over the last couple of weeks, the big elephant in the room, and I don't want to harp on it, is we can't cut the town anymore without cutting critical services. We just went through that exercise and heard that we cannot cut them anymore, basically, without cutting the central services to the resident. And so I think it will be up to this body to determine what they want to do with the, with the board there. And I think once you get there, I think everything else is going to stop. And so if the 4.2%. The 4.2 cent increase in the board budget, if that's a non negotiable, then there's no reason to come back because we need to cut anything else. So if you're not going to talk about either decreasing that, then there's no reason to come back because unless you want to affect the central services, then I'm going to vote no if that's, if that's the case. Um, that's the big element in the room. And if I'm wrong, maybe the finance director or the uh, acting town manager can tell me um, if I'm wrong. If we cut the top anymore, would it hurt the central services? I don't know about the four, not four point two. Right. Oh, yeah. clarification. We're at four percent, right? The board of managers. Yes. Yeah. Four yes, percent. Yeah. Well, four percent. So if it's four percent, we just went down point two. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that that is the elephant in the room. We cannot cut any part from the town side right? without cutting the central services. So you will come back and get the clean sheets to do what? If like we know that we've gotten the, the chance of the bare bones. You're going to come back to say, what, cut more? You can't. We were affected with those services. Uh, uh, I will just say, I'm going to go to Councilperson Flags well before doing so. Wherever we take off tonight, uh, we're still flexible. You know, there could be more or less of the board of ed, more or less of the time. If we, I think we should sleep on it and come back and, you know, take a final look and then hopefully on Thursday be prepared to, you know, Take a vote. I'm just I'm just gonna kind of rebut unfortunately what what Council Debeeth and Brown said. You know, we we well, taking small bites of the pie. We put chunks of the pie back last year by cutting taxes 2.95%. So 5.94 is basically a three percent increase over the year before. In my opinion, that's more than tolerable. I really expect it to be somewhere in the 8% total this year increase, which would have been basically a 5% increase over the year before. So I'm still looking at that number of 325, putting it back into the operations budget and seeing that's only going to be, what, another, half, not even a half, of, like a, probably another half percent, three quarters of a percent being somewhere in that 6.5, 6.7% increase. I understand everybody doesn't want to have a big increase, but I know that there's other towns that are talking about eights and tens and twelves right now. You know, it, it's it's it, it's just the reality of inflation in the last year. And we made the mistake of cutting last year when we should have been trying to stay even. Okay. Uh, <laughs> person behind before deputy before we move on i just want to level set where are we from a scenario standpoint sharon can you repeat where we are with each of our inputs right now where we are right now board of ed four percent mm -hmm. yep town operations minus 4.99 percent which encompasses eliminating budget mod CIP, 246,000 in town savings, another 189,000 in town savings from freezing positions for various time frames, and using uh, the 3.25 from 
this year from CIP, that brings our mill rate to 36.58, an increase of 5.94, and fund balance 16.71%. Okay, and then my understanding is that there is not a consensus to move this to a town, to an annual town meeting on May 1st. No one is comfortable moving this forward at this point, and you want to come back and continue to toggle between the numbers. I just want to make sure that I understand that there is not a consensus with the scenario on the floor right now. Okay, I'm seeing head shake. So we want to come back and we want to continue to we want to sleep on it and we want to look at adjusting the various inputs. I can't hear. Sorry. Is that a yes, Deputy Mayor? I'm sorry. I'm looking around the room. Why don't we take a uh, consensus or straw poll, see what folks say? We'll start with Council Person McClary. Here, again, guys, and fellow colleagues. There's nothing else to look at from the downside. Like you're going to put more in. But you can't take anything else out, or you're going to affect what the service is. And so it is unfair to the town staff who has to sit through all of this here and uh, freeze in positions that they feel like they need to come back on Thursday to put them through another long hours of what? So, Council McClary, are you a yes or a no to kick this up to an annual town meeting on May 1st? You all can kick it up, but I'm going to vote no because of it. There's okay. Some, some people, but you can move it forward, but I'm going to vote no. I'm a yes to move it forward, but a no on the vote. Okay. Council person here. Can I make your point? So, Council person here had a point from 10 minutes ago and I neglected to follow. I'm sorry. So the, the town made a bold move and moved a lot of our savings into a place where we're generating, I mean, not substantial funds, but a considerable amount of funds. Has that been uh, included in any of these scenarios? Because they are what, CDs? Interest rates. You yeah. know about interest rates? Right. Revenue from the interest rate that we moved, it says uh, short time investment fund. Yes. We have to factor that into some of the revenue projections. Okay. So where are you on your drop off with the question? Tonight or you're going to revisit it from where I don't see where we would be able to make any additional changes. We're at the board is at four percent, correct? We agree on that. Um I know there are more. Uh, positions that we were able to uh, include that we had before. I think the 5.94% isn't where we want to be, but uh, it's much more favorable than the, the 7 or 8% that we were talking before. We're at 16.71% for fund balance, which was where we were trying to you know, maintain. So I'm fine with where we are now, but if the majority of the council wants to deliberate further, then I'm fine. Yeah. And, and before we get to council first, Mahan, I'll just go and put mine on the record. Nothing is set in stone because we talked about 4% of the board of tonight. We could come back on Thursday and say 3% and these numbers change. Or the council, or we can say five. That's what I mean. This is all fluid. So just because we say we need time to look at the numbers doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to impact negatively on the town side. It could impact to the board of ed side. So all I'm saying, you know, it's so when a couple of us are speaking and saying it's only going to affect the town side, that's not, not true. It could, affect, you know, it could impact the board side too. Uh, the question is, do we make that final decision tonight or do folks really want to think it over and talk to some of your constituents? And, Get some input or controversial behind. Yeah, I was I was actually gonna make the same point. Um we it the whatever adjustments we have doesn't have to affect the town. I think um to Councilor McClure's point, we're already at the bare bones. I don't think anyone wants to even touch anything around the town anymore. It's 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 where it is. Um we can still adjust the millage a bit, we can still adjust the board of education uh budget a bit. I um, I 
Where we are currently, I would not move this forward because I do think that there are some capital improvement um, projects that should be included here that I that I mentioned previously. I want to reiterate because nah, I feel like I'm beating the dead horse at, at this point. Um, but you know, I I think right now we definitely should take a beat and we can come back on Thursday think about things, fine tune it a bit more. I think we're at a phenomenal place right now. We've made great progress, but there's still a little bit more work that we need to, um, a little bit more on this budget that we need to hone in on. Um, and then to another point, I don't think that we even made a mistake last year with cutting taxes. Uh, we even see it at the federal level where they're cut and then raised and cut and then raised. There's times of loosening your belt, there's times of tightening. And this is the time where we are uh, tightening. Um, so I, uh, I don't think I don't think it was a mistake at all. But here we, you know, we're going to work with what we have. Um, but like I said, um, guard over placements. Um, gosh, I'm forgetting it. See, it's it's late. I'm ready to go at this point. I'm quite tired. Guard over placements as well as the um, hazardous tree removals. It's what I would continue to advocate for, at least with the capital improvement. Oh, That's what you said. To be Thank you. So, I'm um, advocating to once again, I'm really any way, shape, or form. I'm advocating for us to try to figure this out on the best way possible, right? I, I'm saying that I'm having palpitation because we had a five day. 94% increase to 36.58 uh, was that noted, but it was in 2020 with that 37.46, right? So we're looking at that and we're trying to measure apples to apples, which still is the best thing you brought about with the HPA and the um, uh, military. But I also understand that there's a lot of other things that are going to be up, gas, or whatever. I think if, if we can um, say that, okay, we're at 36.58, even if we went to 37, something, try to get some of the projects um, back, right? Because I think while we raise taxes, people can't see where their tax money is going. That's going to be a problem as well. But I think we need to be a little bit more intentional about how to see the plan that we are looking take out the foot pad that's going to uh, impact the quality of my development. Um, if you were to say that if the majority wants to do something, I can go along with the majority. I can do that. I can do that. We can take some more time and get to a budget where the majority of us at the moment that at the end was going to be able to go for a budget. Um, because that's our 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 Friends and neighbors and residents are expecting us to do it. To say that, you know, let's go along with it, let's move it forward, but I'm not going to vote for it. I don't think that, that that's the, the right answer either. So I'd rather work out to take the fact that there's still going to be a limit. And there's a prospect of another night to hate that, but that's one of our jobs. Council person, two hours. Um, I would I would not move this forward in its current condition. Um, I would really like to see the three hundred twenty five thousand dollars moved back into operations to give the town manager the discretion to put some of those sick projects in. I don't want to hamstring her and say it's got to be this one or it's got to be that one. Some of them are probably more important from an operational standpoint than others. So I, I wouldn't want to hamstring her with with directing it specifically at some things. Um, but I, I'd like to see that 325 move back into the operations budget and see what those numbers look like. Um, but I really think that we're very, very close. Um, I would be willing to, with that small change, I would willing to put it forward and vote yes for it. Even though I think 4% to the Board of Ed could be three and a half, and that half percent could also be moved over to the town side. So we're not, we're not, we're so there's a little bit more equity. But if 
If we had that number, I could vote yes for that. I thought we can. No, so no. we took it off. We took it off the expenses. So we we applied it to the expenses. We didn't put it in the budget to spend. We put it in to save money and to, to decrease the millage. Right. And just a, a question for the acting town manager uh, or the mayor's on the line. Uh, the annual meeting is scheduled for first Monday. First Monday. And what's the timing requirement for what? Uh, yeah, Marguerite. Oh, go ahead. Sure. By five days. So the town clerk, the town clerk uh, told the council that we needed to provide the budget for preparation by 420. The finance department needs ample time to put it together and we need to make sure that we notice it correctly, which is the five days. So it's a little more um, for, we have to back us and our work into that. Um, it, it's, so, so with that by 420, so, so we do have some time. However, tonight it's early, it's, it's 836. Right. And I think that we are almost there. Um, I would agree with Councilor Politis in finding more equity and balancing out the town side. We've heard from our directors in these spaces that are telling us that we cannot roll back any additional services some arguments I'm concerned about from my colleagues because we're talking about supporting capital improvement projects and you know inching up more, but not providing the services to actually implement and execute upon that because we're not investing in the service side. And so we, we need people to do the work. And so, um, so just to repeat this, Sharon's, both Sharon's, um, so right now I believe we're at a 4% um, increase to the Board of Education. Uh, we are at a 36.58 mil rate, and it's at a 5.94% increase to our taxpayers with a fund balance of 16.71. Um, okay, thanks. So I just wanted to make sure that that's kind of where the consensus lies with our body. And I what I'm hearing is uh, Councilor Politis would like to see what the numbers look like with the 325K applied to a tax, the tax side, which is essentially going to increase. Um, and I'm hearing some may want to decrease the BOE to about 3.5 to see where we land. So before we decide to end our night, I would like those two scenarios ran. So we can see that and additionally um, consider that. Before I do that, just one comment to Councillor Mahan. It will make you half happy in terms of the request. The guardrail replacement is not of the general fund balance, but of capital grant, which means that part is not eliminated. Oh, okay. So things that are low sit and capital grant stays with just those that were part of the general fund. So you are half satisfied right. with that. And just to follow up on the mayor's point, if you yeah. could run those numbers, and I, I think what will be important is that if we're able to reach some accommodations and make some compromises, it's not gonna happen tonight, right? So let's kind of take tomorrow and sort of work it One through, month. come back Thursday and, you know, Get it done. Get it done. Oh, tonight. Let's get it done. Tonight. Yeah, I think mean, tonight, you know, well, we can try, but I just think people are talking off emotion and, and you know, give us another share of what we can do. But I just think it's good. We're still within our three hour tonight, is good. <laughs> um, um, yeah. So Sharon, I think the first, I think the easiest thing to do is run the existing numbers with the 3.5% to the Board of Ed. And then uh, tell us the, what that looks like. And then, um, then Councilor Politis's request, um, because I would support seeing that too, um, not if it increases taxes more. So. Okay, so we'll start first with just moving the board of ed to 3.5%. It will have our mill rate at 36.47 which is a 5.62% increase. 
fund balance is at 16.75%. Okay. Before I change another one, does anyone need me to repeat that? 36.47, which is a 5.62% increase. Fund balance, 16.75%. Now to the second change, keeping board of it at 3.5%. And we, if we take the 325 out, that's so that it will carry over into doing whatever we needed to do. It will bring our mill rate 36.62%, which is a 6.04% increase. Again, that's 36.62 mill rate. 6.04% increase, fund balance 16.7%. Okay, thank you, Sharon. So, can we, can we run the 4% of the, the board with the 325 then? Just do 4% instead of 3.5? Yes, please. And keep in the Given the 325. 325. Sorry. That's fine. The mill rate for this scenario, scenario 100. Sorry. <laughs> um, mill rate 36.73%, 6.36% increase, and fund balance. 16.66%. I like that. That's Sharon, what was the uh, the tax increase? 6.36%. So that's 36.73 mil rate, 6.36% increase. Fund balance, 16.66%. And that's with the board of ed at 4%. The town balance, the town budget not using the 325 from this year, so they have the flexibility to use it in other areas when they carry it over there. So those are the recent scenarios. Okay. Deputy Mayor, I would ask that you run a consensus on some of the newest scenarios. Okay. Uh, Can I ask, ask for another scenario? Please <laughs> start. <laughs> <laughs> what did Councillor Merritt ask? I, I couldn't hear him, sorry. He wants to see the numbers <laughs> run at a 16% fund balance. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So if we, so you'd like to use some fund balance to balance the budget, you're saying? Yes, we went to 16, we kept the 4% on the board. And uh, didn't change anything else. So if we let's start with that, that counselor applies is
Okay, so if we used by trial and error to get the fund balance to about 16%, I got it to 16.01, would mean using about 675,000 off the of fund balance. And that would, and that's keeping Board of Ed town operations the same. It would bring the mill rate to 36.42 which is a 5.48% increase and fund balance at 16.01%. Yes. All right. Thanks. All right. So do we want to see if we can get some consensus with some of these scenarios? Uh, why don't we start first with the 4% the board of ed with the Back in end of the 325, then we'll go to the 4% without the 325. So, oh, okay, 4% with the 325 included. Council versus providers and mayor two. Correct. So we're going to do just two, two people for that. No, no, no. We didn't all respond. Okay. I have a resident assembly. That's an area. But I think the army has. All right. So the, the original scenario that we all there was consensus on was the 4% uh, without the 325. Remember, Fran wanted to add the 325 into the town budget, okay. which, which increased the share. We want to give the percentages again with the 4% uh, and 325. I think it's 36.73 is the mill rate, 6.36. And 16.66 fund balance. Yeah. All right. What was that? What was the 4%. 4%. Okay. And then what about running the 4% without the additional 325 going to the town budget? Any consensus on that? All right. And what about the Board of Ed at 3.5%, mill rate 36.47, increase 5.62, fund balance at 16.75. That's not inclusive of the 325 going to the town side. 3.5%. No, okay. And the three and a half percent with the 325,000 going to the town side, which I have 6.04% as a tax increase. I don't know what to do. 36.62. 36.62. 6% tax increase, 6.04 and 16.7 fund balance. Not going to get one, one person. Because are all of our scenarios. Yeah, the last scenario we right. just found out it's not 16. Oh. And your tax rate is only a 5.4. Yeah, I think that's trying to invade the territory. You know, fund balance, but any traction on that 16% uh, fund balance? Uh, I, I, uh, can we, 
Oh, sorry. Is there any, can we run Sharon that the last um, scenario that the deputy mayor just mentioned with the 16.01 fund balance with a 3.5% to the BOE and see what that does to our overall tax rate. Okay, so board of head at 3.5, the town operations is not using the 325 from this year's capital. And we are using 675,000 fund balance. That will bring the mill rate to 36.31, 5.16% increase. If I round that down to a 0%, it will show 5%. But if I move it up to 2% decimal point is a 5.16% increase. And the fund balance only changed slightly at about 16.05%. So you just said that, um, sorry, I was trying to type 3.5% uh, for the BOE with a mill rate of 36.31. And are, you said, what was the tax increase to the town? 5.16%. 5.16%. Yes. With a fund balance of 16.05. Yes. Um, that, is there a consensus on, on that one? Um, that really gets us down to a 5% overall tax increase per every household and taxpayer. Mm -hmm. You're still investing in the town, uh, the, the Board of Education with a 3.5 increase still keeps our fund balance within our policy means. Are we interested in kicking that one up to the, to the annual meeting? Doesn't... Is there interest in that? Um... Okay. That. I'm a councilperson big room. Yeah. Councilman Mahan. Yeah, this is too far out. I'm not going to go with that. Councilman Mahan. Same. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think the most significant comment that I was council by is that we had 3% cut in taxes last year. So I mean, we ought to subtract that 3% from whatever we're doing, and that should be part of our dialogue when you're we describing what's happening. I mean, that's a big fact that right? we are not raising taxes five or six percent, we're just we're raising them only two or three percent over what you know what they should have been last year. And so I mean that makes a big difference, I think, in what we put you know, how we present it. Yeah, it does, but at the yeah. same time, I just, and, and I, I just want to make sure everybody sure remembers. It, it, it does come from merit, but when you go out to the public and say six percent, people don't care about what happened last year or the year before. They just know that you're telling them like taxes going up by six percent. Yeah. Like, like three percent. No, 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 no. But they're talking about what's in their wallet, you know, today. Yeah. But anyway, council prepared. Is there a question? Yeah, we were going around and see if there was some sense for that last year, 16% from now. The body doesn't have a consensus. Oh, I think you can get it. Sure, sure, sure. Body doesn't have a point, so there is no more to them. That's All right, no, there, there's no consensus for the 16% fund balance that last year. So, so is the councilman here? No, no, no. My 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 question is okay. So we had ARPA funds last year. We utilized that. Everyone in the community saw bustling activity throughout the town. Taxes were higher. We reduced them. So I do believe there will be some level of acceptance for. A limited increase. I know people uh, forget very quickly, <laughs> but with this budget, 
I'm looking at the scenario for the fund balance being 16.6. Um, that seems to be, that keeps the board at 4%, correct? Right? Um, we'd like it to be lower in terms of the overall increase in the mill rate, but the fund balance seems to be one of those areas that we're unwilling to uh, reduce any further than 16 and 5. So, so why don't we revisit that? Any consensus on the 4% with the 325 going to the town side with 6.36 tax increase and the fund balance of 16.66? All the scenarios include a 5.5 to a 6.6 tax increase. So I don't think we're getting away from that. It's just, oh, let's just see if there's a consensus. 4% with the 325 going to the town side. Yeah, okay, that's fine. And mill rate at 36.73, 6.36, and the fund balance at 16.66. Yes. I want to see, is that on? I just want to see what a, uh, a possible scenario, another one, 101. Um, what would it look like if we reduced that fund balance up to 16 and a half? Well, how would it adjust the mill rate if it went up to 16 and a half? So let's kind of finish getting the consensus on this latest scenario, and then we'll see if the 16.5, I think right now it's at 16.6. It's not going to be too much, but yeah, very little much. But anyway, so how do you? Vote on the four uh, percent. I'm I'm good with the four percent. Okay. Councilperson to Beacon Brown. So we were going to put six hundred and seventy five thousand of fund down in to the budget. We got this down to six hundred percent. So if we're at four percent plus the three twenty five, can we add the six seventy five fund down? In that, okay. all right. So, Mayor, where do you looking up? Yes, <laughs> where, where are we at now? I'm sorry, I, I kind of muffled. Yeah, I'm sorry, we were at the four percent. Uh, with 325 going to the town side, 36.73 mill rate, 6.36 tax, and 16.66 fund balance. So there's a consensus for that one? Yes. Okay. I, I don't support that tax increase, but I do support getting the consensus voted up to the annual meeting for a formal vote. It's too much, guys. <laughs> Councilman Merritt is ready to go home. So do we settle on that day? Is that settled in the body? I think that is the, uh, yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good job, guys. Um, so it looks like, so Sharon, Gentle Harris, you've recorded that accurately as far as the consensus. Um, again, this is a consensus to bring this budget to the annual meeting for a formal vote. Um, and so this gives uh, the finance department some time to compile and button it up for the town clerk, put in the notice. Oh, at the time. Um, I'll just repeat, make sure everything, uh, we have it recorded accurately. Board of Ed, 4%. Town, not utilizing that 3.25% in 24, but letting it roll to use as needed in fiscal year 23, I mean, fiscal year 24. We are not using any fund balance. Therefore, from the mill rate, 36.73, 6.36% increase, 
with a fund balance of 16.66%. Oh, you were all in, in, I'm just, I'm sorry, just to be throwing um, Diana on it, but we were okay at a 6% fund balance. 16. I think that's not a thing. I mean, that comes back. Yeah, we were okay at a 16% fund balance. That was a board at 3.5. Can we repeat what it looks like at 16 percent? I do want to know what it's all about. Yeah, that's what I was saying. We didn't get consensus on that because of the fund balance dropping below 645. We have no chance to vote on this one in May. Before we get there. And, and that's sort of what I'm having right now, to be honest. You know, there's a number of our, as have, it's come up before, but there's a number of our residents in our community that are on a fixed income that, as it's been stated before, um, can't necessarily afford that that 6% hike um, in the millage rate, uh, especially amongst everything else going up. And um, I guess I kind of got lost in like, trying to find a consensus that, you know, I kind of forgot about how, where most of our residents really stand, where a lot of our residents really stand and being able to afford to continue to live in this town of Bloomfield. So if we can, if we can revisit Bringing it down to that 16%, I understand it may hurt us a bit um, when we bought the bond for the two libraries that we decided to build for 30 million plus dollars. You know, I, I think that if if we could have made that sacrifice there, I think we can just sacrifice a little bit more to make sure that our residents aren't put into such a major financial bind as because they're already being put in one. So I think. I think I'd actually like to change where I stand to move us down to that 16% um, to uh, decrease our millage rate, help our help the folks out that really need it. Some of us may be able to assume that a 6% hike in the millage rate, but there's quite a few people that really cannot afford it. We already have to put $20,000 in additional funds into the $40,000 in additional funds to the crisis fund. And now, you know, that just shows you that there's a great need out there. I don't think folks can really afford a 6% hike. Um, it's, I guess this is my come to Jesus moment, but I, 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 it just dawned on me. Well, I'm not going to say if we made that much money, that changed. I may have to realize our need. And that's that's a risk. And if it jeopardizes our ring, we're going to be awfully embarrassed all that time. Because that's going to affect the bond costs. And that's a few decimals. So, I mean, so it looks like you're saving people, this is going to be worth it. How much so does it? it catch you if we lose our ring. How much does it, you propose 16% that also? But how much, how much does? It save us just so, because you no, know, like I said, can, can I? I just want to hear it again if I if I can. Is that okay? And what for, which scenario would you like to? Do? Uh, sixteen percent to the for 16%? the yeah for the uh, fund balance. If we keep, take into account the three hundred twenty five thousand that Council Colitis is mentioning, and keep in board of it at four percent. What does it look like at three and a half? Three and a half and four. Yeah, well, let's start with the four since I have that there. 
And it means we're using, is it 675 for fund balance? That would bring the mill rate, I mean, yep, the fund balance is 16%. The mill rate is at 36.42, a 5.48% increase. And that's at board of ed at 4%. Now, if we change the board of ed to three and a half percent, and keeping all else the same with the fund balance at 675,000, the mill rate is 36.31, an increase of 5.16%. And of course, the fund balance will still be at 16.05. <coughs> <laughs> Got a little burst of bankruptcy. Are we running a consensus on on that last one? The three point five percent at for the board of ed, a thirty six point three one mill rate, five point six percent overall tax increase, and a sixteen point zero five fund balance. Okay, what say you, Councilman Harris? I I have a problem with the three point five percent for the board. So you're not one point oh five. You're not, Councilman Mahan. You want to speak? It's it's difficult because I don't the the height for a lot of our events, especially those that are bigger than our I um to see it at the four percent. Well, we're doing the three point five. We're doing that at the three point five. Yeah. Okay. I'll do it at the three your yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, no. Yes. No. 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 Yes. So yes is one, two, three. One, two. I don't think we have. Go to it's a no doubt. For the record, I'm also a yes for this. This is the closest it gets to the five percent tax increase. That's all right. 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 So that was three point. So wait. do we want to go back to the four percent? The original four percent. Pardon me. The last four. I mean, again, the goal is to come out with a consensus on one of these scenarios, but again, I think it's also important that we all rally around and be comfortable to the extent that we can. So if folks don't feel that they're in a position to do it tonight, I'm not, I me mean, personally, not telling them we have to do it tonight. But if we, if we feel it's important to do it tonight, let's get it done. I'll stay here as long as we need to to get it done. But it needs to be, it needs to be right. And I talk about pennies. So I mean, we're like this close. Right. So drive us off, drive everybody in this room back out on Thursday. Let's take a vote of town staff. Well, we need to back. It's get it done. So I, I have a question. Okay. Uh, yeah. My my question my question is we're talking about six point five percent fund balance or six I mean sixteen point five percent fund balance or sixteen. So could could you detail what could potentially happen between now in the time that we, in other words, is it likely that we would dip below the 16 or do you think that we could hold steady? 
because everyone is concerned about this 16% and that we want to be at 16.5, but if we're at 16.5, the mill rate is too high. So is there anyone that could provide uh, hmm? <laughs> yeah, right, right. I don't want to say justification, but but a scenario that we would be able to manage that sixteen percent. I was trying to understand with your with your okay. We're concerned about going to sixteen percent, right? And you're concerned if it's a possibility that we would even get below the 16 percent. Right. Um, you know, we have to stay true to the budget. So um, we would have to manage that and make sure that whatever we need to do, that we don't have to pay into the fund offset more than the real job. Because we have to stay with anybody here. If we're putting 6 675000 the balance is budget. So I think the, the, the sticking point is that 16%. We want to uh, make the increase as, as less impactful on the residents as possible. And then at the same time, being responsible. So we had, I believe we had consensus on the 4%, right? And the, the only scenario that we, not the only, but one that we did run and, and was suggested that we sort of find something in between 4% and 3.5% and, and 3.75%. Um, and to see how that, how those numbers work now. Well, we were concerned about fund balance. I mean, why don't we, why don't we run the 4%? percent basically, the, instead of the 16.01 fund balance, when we run at 16 point, or now 16.2 to 16.25, that gives us just a little bit of buffer. It's on 16 percent in case the meteor hits the plant and what is this all about? I don't think it will be any less than that if the five percent are going to be to 5.9 percent. I mean, it's going to go forever to the five, right? <laughs> So the the I mean, like, the on the company. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. and I'm, the idea that somehow five is a great number and six is, I mean, it's just. Right. So again, are, are we prepared to take a a vote on the four percent? No. Really quickly. Before before we go on the vote, I I understand uh, the whole example of pricing. We aren't going to be more so about five to the five point nine, except for when they're looking at the actual dollar amount that it translates out to, because they feel that in their pocket. And that difference is definitely felt by some folks more than others. So we, we still do have to be conscious of that. Very important. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about somebody right now, Who's paying approximately five thousand dollars in taxes on the home? We're talking about a one percent change. We're talking about an extra fifty thousand. So we're talking about. I mean, it's not. I don't want to say it's insignificant because it is significant. We're talking about a six, you know, six percent increase, six plus percent increase. What we want to talk about about three percent increase from where it was just a year ago. And we're talking about, you know, we're faced with staggering inflation rates. And I mean, just, just DPW's fuel costs are, have gone so much just, you know, I mean, so, I mean, people have to realize that, you know, a three or four percent increase over what we were just over a year ago. 
you know, it, it is not, it does not stagger based on the amount of inflation will be known to have. So if it's an extra fifty dollars a year or sixty dollars a year, it's unfortunate, but you know, it's it's, it's I, I, I believe it's reality. I believe it's a reality of the situation. It just said uh, before we get into taking this consensus and making a motion. Last year, when we decreased taxes, we said that this year there was going to be an increase. Mm -hmm. We all knew that going into this year that there was going to be an increase because of the actions that we undertook last year. Uh, we didn't know what the level of increase would be, but we knew that we would have to kind of face reality this year. So, again, it's I'm not a proponent of tax increases, but I, I do know that when we made the bold decision last year to decrease taxes, that it was going to come back and cause us to have to increase taxes this year. And, and whether it's 6.3 or 6.1, we're all going to feel it uh, in some form or fashion. So I, I, know, I don't know, folks, we got to make some decisions here. And I think we had some consensus amongst. Um, the body at four uh, percent, but if folks are not comfortable, I, I'd like to entertain a motion, have some discussion. If we don't have the votes to do it, then we'll we won't do it. Thank you. Which which part was no, which is the point of increase with um, increase to so, Okay, discussion very much. Okay. <laughs> we'll have to wait for a question. Okay. Any discussion on that? I, I, I think Let's for the way for yeah. So I think it should be made clear, right? That it's a difficult budget and everyone is sharing some of that pain. How do we board? But I'm looking and last year we had projected that we would have been at 34, 35.9% millage. This year, when we passed our budget last year. So 35.9 to a 36.73. Point eight. 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 Point what happened last year, but the three percent cut last year is causing us to do this. And uh, I think people will feel better knowing that it's only two or three percent more than the year before. And so we really are not increasing taxes by two percent. To India, can you do us a favor? Can you get uh, Councilperson McClary so we can vote on that? No, I think it's to come into the area. Yeah. Hey, which I'm like, I don't know how to do it. Here, is it 36.7 yeah right yeah. it, it's just it's it's very difficult to um to go along with this because you know, like i said we just allocated a bunch more funds into the crisis fund to help folks out that are in it we we said that we ran through that fund faster than we've had in many years prior um there's a great need out there even if it's just a $50 increase, people are even having a tough time affording that. Um, so it's, you know, it, it may seem, you know, for, for many folks that, you know, $50 or $50 area is easy, but for a lot of folks, it's really not. It's a really tough time. 
uh, with inflation, with the cost of everything rising, uh, utility costs rising. So on top of it, having this as well uh, can be the straw that breaks the camel back, camel's back for a lot of families. Um, so, you know, I, I just I just want to make that point uh, as as we're moving forward that there are far reaching and deep repercussions to even a fifty dollar increase. Thank you. Councilperson Florida. And rebuttal, if you don't have a six point three six percent increase, what do you have left in the town to live in? If you can't have essential services and you can't have DPW doing their job and you can't have the police department doing their job, what do you have left in town? We continue every single year that I've been on this this council, except for last year, we've taken away from the town budget, taken away from the town budget, taken away from the town budget. In the meantime, you have step increases, contractual increases and in, in wages and stuff like that. Eventually, you have to pay the piper. And unfortunately, this year is this year. And it's not a 6.36% increase. It's a 3.41% increase over the year before when we cut taxes to help people save. And we've been doing that since I've been on this council, trying to hold the tax tax rate down because we had every excuse, the pandemic, we didn't know what was gonna happen. It didn't affect the town at, at all from a, from a budget standpoint, we collected all of our revenues. So we, we've cut taxes when we've cut taxes and held taxes in check when we really didn't need to at the expense of kicking all those SIP projects down the road. And we're doing that again this year. We're only giving a little bit of money to the town for SIP projects above what we get for capital grants. We have to, at some point, raise taxes in order to do the projects that you are so concerned about. It takes money to do this. We're not doing any of that stuff. Any of the stuff that you really want to do, we're not doing that because it's not in the budget because we're doing the stuff is that we're, we're cutting this down to a strictly below maintenance budget for the town side of operations. So we need, at some point, I, I, and it kills me to say this because I can't stand paying taxes, but the reality is, is that, you know, we're going to have a town with potholes the size of craters because we just, we just keep kicking the stuff down the road, kicking the stuff down the road and kicking the stuff down the road. Eventually, eventually we have to do our job. And unfortunately, it's not always a pretty job. And unfortunately, we don't always have the good narratives to sell to the people. And this is one of those years where you have to say, you know, I really, I, I really would raise my hand right now for probably an eight to 10% increase because I think we should be doing more SIP projects. But I understand, you know, I understand our population, but, uh, but the reality is, is that if you don't spend some money on operation side of the, the budget, every every so often, you, you don't have a town to live in. Any the other comments? I, I would just say, with respect to tax increases, you know, people want to see their services maintained, if not improved. They want to see their roads improved. They want to see the schools improved. And I think if you know the services are adequate, then you know people have to sort of get comfortable with the fact that there could be an increase in their taxes, but we can't decrease services and increase taxes because that is just uh, a bad combination. Um, but uh, if there's no more discussion on the motion, then why don't we call? Did you have a comment? Oh, I didn't have a comment. Um, it's beating, a, it's going to beat the dead horse, but I'll be quick. Um, I think you're spot on the premier. You can't decrease um, services while increasing uh, taxes. And then when you look at where you cut from, um, we don't have good partners, and I wish the relationship was better. And I hope we can get a good um, relationship with the, um, with the rest of all stakeholders in the town so that we aren't. Um, with our backs against the wall, um, accusing us of being anti-teachers, I fully support 
pictures of the kids and making sure um, they have what they need. But I didn't see anything in that budget book that was trans transformational on how we're going to turn around um, or make better progress that we have made. I see healthcare, I see transportation, and I see uh, cost of living increase that we voted for. Um, and the um, in the budget, I don't see any teachers. We've heard from the the uh, teachers unions that there's some problems as it relates to um, the step increase, which is one of the main drivers for us um, losing teachers because they can't, they're not able to compete with the steps. Somebody can leave for 20 years and go to Glastonbury and get a $25,000, $30,000 increase, but the Board of Ed is not telling us that they're going to solve that problem. So um, I definitely agree. I don't want to make this about the Board of Ed. I want to make it overall about um, decreasing services while increasing taxes. I just can't, I can't, I can't, I can't get on board with that. So you agree with me. Chair, can you repeat the motion before we call the vote? For India, I'm sorry, India. Okay, a motion to move by Councilor Lisa Brown, second by Councilor Merritt, secretary of scenario 24. Um, uh, EOEA four percent, and that's not even like three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars to go to you the fee in the FY twenty-four budget. No fund balance usage, which will bring us to. 36.73%, 6 6.36% increase, 16.6% on that. Okay, so Councilperson Flyers. Aye. Councilperson Levine Brown. What's your name? She said. Councilperson Levine. Okay. You're allowed to change your mind. As we all are entitled to that. Nay. Council person Eric. Council person. No. I vote yes. Uh Mayor? No. Yeah. So what is that? Four four. Four, four. Okay. All right. So go ahead. Council person. And I'm sure it's probably in one of the scenarios where we didn't put the 325 in. It's in one of those scenarios, right? I'm not quite sure which one. I think we have the numbers without the 325. Yeah, yeah. it's just the I don't know. Here's not a place. I got to go ahead and talk to you. Six standard girls. The 325 goes back into Chicago to help. Not no. It has a that was four percent to the board, two hundred thousand to the budget amount for a five hundred thousand CIP and two forty six hundred twenty position. The one that you can complete the position, the 325 taken out, the 1.9 interest of town operations, 36.5, 5.94 increase, and a 16.7 on that. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 I don't know if that's the amount of starter this time, but I don't know. I don't know exactly how those are. Can I go and get your votes to change? <laughs> Is it in the <laughs> You're talking about no. Oh, let's go. Okay. So then it gets my vote to change, but then it be in the same situation because it becomes a little less and fair play. Um, and right now we're at stalemate, so I'm going to go back to voting for the motion that we made, so that we can move to get it down from the board. Or do we have to go through? So I think we have to redo the vote. Okay, so I like to make a motion. I like to make a motion. Four percent to the board of education, adding $350,000 back to the town. 
it would give us a 36.73 mil. It's a 6.36% increase. It needs to come down at 15.6%. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? Other question. Council person Flores. Well, um, I'm gonna throw in scenario 25 real quick as a compromise to split the difference. And maybe instead of moving both 325 into the extent, just move over 170. So. That friendly amendment. That would be friendly. What does that do? Not much. It doesn't do much, but it's supposed to be different. Right? It should be. Well, you have support on your 325. You have support on your 325. So now we're going to know, but I'm trying to gain more consensus. So I have five, maybe I can get one more. So out of the 325, how much do you want to 175 to the town of Spanning 150 to the earth increasing the increasing the, the, the taxes? <clears throat> well, we will be. 36.66, increase. Fund balance, 16.68. It went up. And that's keep your board of energy 1%. Okay. Project percentage is Six thirty six and six sixty. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so did you accept it? Okay. Discussion on the motion. The motion. Okay. Yeah. Quick, well, quick question. Um, what does if if we if we bring uh. BOE down to 3.75, What does that look like? We do have that number. Um, well, so the, the scenario that we just mentioned, but 3.34, oh, sorry, 3.75, three and a quarter, three and three quarters. Jeez. Plus no, um, well, so the well, just oh, instead of four percent, three point seven five. Yeah, thank you. Oh, my balance. The mill rate will be at. 36.59 increase 5.97. Fund balance 16.71. Okay. Councilor Harrington. I have a question and scenario. Uh, if we went just to 16. Point four on the fund balance. Would that make any potential difference in this overall scenario? Because I know we're, we're kind of wedging. Thank you very much. We really need to undermine. I mean, it's not percentage here, percentage here. It's not going to make a major difference. We have sixteen point seven one. We look at the grade down to sixteen point four. Percent. So when they use it, the sum comes Sharon, I I did not clearly hear uh, Councillor Mahan's proposal to his front the friendly amendment with the three point seven five BOE. No, it was, I'm sorry. There was no 
proposed amendment to the motion is just asking a question of discussion. Uh, oh, what was the I, I um, stated? It's it was uh three, so it's it's uh council applied a scenario of the 175 that the added in um and uh 3.75 for the BOE. Um yeah, 175 for three. 3.75 for the BOE. What does that do to the mill rate and the tax rate? 36.59, which is a 5.97% increase, and 16.71 for our mill rate percent. I'm sorry, for our fund balance percentage. Okay. Voice in the sky. Okay, thanks. I just wanted the clarification. Sorry about that. So there wasn't a acceptance of that one, right? We didn't bring it up for a question. It was just it was a question, but it wasn't brought up for consensus. It can okay. be. How do you feel about it? No, it's too high for me as far as the tax increase. But Deputy Mayor, I'll sorry about that. You can run the consensus, the vote. Okay. Any more discussion on the the motion? Right. Oh, oh Sharon, you were oh. going to run Tony's. Can you have the 3.75%? No. It was 4%. Four. Four and, and the fund balance was 624 And we're keeping the 175 yes. same for the town? Yes. Mm -hmm. Would bring the mill rate 36.51, a 5.74% increase. And of course, the mill rate, I mean, the fund balance is 16.4. And that would require us using 300,000 fund balance. We're close to the 16.5. No, right. that's not, that's not a lot more attractive. So can you change it? Can you change the motion? Friendly amendment. Friendly amendment. I would call it. I would call it. Can you make who who make the motion? Sure motion. Yeah, so you accept the amendment. Is there a second? Yes. Council person there second. Yes. Okay, so it's now Council Harrison's motion. And do you have that? Yes, yeah, so the motion is to keep the BOE at 4%, um, to add uh, in the 175, which would bring the mill rate to 36.51, increase of 5.74%, 16.4% on balance using $300,000. All right. Okay. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion on the motion? Okay. My yes. I can. Uh, I won't support that because I'm again the fund balance dipping below sixteen point five. I can't support that. I'm afraid of uh, what will happen with our rating. What does it look like at 16.5? Okay, so I think if there are no other discussion items, we'll take a vote on, on the motion. I have a discussion item. Deputy Mayor. Go ahead, uh, Council Member. What if we do exactly that, but at 16.5? So that's scenario however many. 16.4, I'm telling you, that's us. But. Four to four yeah. percent, yeah. Mm -hmm. But sixteen point five was um, so the deputy mayor. That could be.
All right, so the new scenario boarded at 4%. Um, there's another going to 75% of that 325 on fiscal year 2026. The mill rate will now be at 36.56%. A 5.88% increase. Fund balance will be at 16.5% which would require us using 195,000 for fund balance. I'll check with the parish of 30 minutes. I want to propose the friendly amendment of uh, 16.5. <laughs> is, is that right? I have to post the friendly amendment. 16.5% uh, for the fund balance of 4% BOE budget, 36.56 for our mill rate, which is a 5.88% increase. Is there a second? So I thought it was already accepted. Yeah, it's so already accepted. Yeah. Oh, so they were spoken. Are, oh, did they accept it? I didn't hear it formally. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, is is it? We, we can discuss discussion. Is yeah. there any discussion on this current motion of the four percent with the sixteen point five fund balance, the thirty six point five six mill rate, five point eight eight tax increase, and one hundred seventy five dollars a year downside? Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? We'll start with Council Person Polite. Aye. Councilperson Brown, Councilperson Mahan, aye. Councilperson Harrison, Councilperson Mayor, Councilperson Mayor. Mayor, well, I vote aye. Mayor, no. I vote no. Okay, so that's six yes, one abstention, and one no. Okay. So motion carries. Motion carries. All right, so the motion's good, good to go? Yeah. Awesome, okay, thank you all so much. Hard work for my fellow colleagues. I appreciate your time and staff, you're ex extremely valued. With that, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I'm moved by the deputy mayor and seconded by the rest of our colleagues. Thank you all so much, have a wonderful night. Take care.